Hey there, hi there. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome back to the Spire. It is most certainly good to be here. Let's go in Metafusion, Misachiever, Blank Epilogue Page, Yamausa, Duke of Lameness, Migashu, five metric years of witty jokes. Either Pikerbocker, Just Blake, Fireworks, Cham Scampy with the six months. Thanks for the positive educational vibes. That's right. It's good to be back here. So I spent some time migrating all of this stuff just for full transparency here. We are up and running on my new PC. Um, I should still have the full run history so we can see our previous ironclad runs and the defect run that I did, even though we're on a different computer now. Lauren Cates with the two, tier two and the four months of subscription. Glad I'm feeling better of all the things that you don't miss about teaching is the germ factories that kids can be. Definitely do not miss uh, interacting with the, the general public in this way. It's, it's kind of nice to be isolated in some ways. Avi Papi with the four months of support, opening a cold one. Cheers. DKV with a full year. Thanks for the year of cozy content. Things are going better, definitely. And David's two with a prime sub in the three months. Thank you, thank you. So, something I'm also, let's say, trying out right now. Um, but I'm, I'm feeling more and more like doing full-time. Is running a no-frills stream. That is, beyond the game and the webcam, no additional on-screen visuals, so no subscriber alerts, no overlays, just to create a, a cleaner, more direct stream. Uh, especially as the stream has grown larger and larger, I feel like there's more value in having fewer interruptions to the stream. And with so many people subscribing on a monthly basis, uh, it does become a lot to uh, have popping up constantly. Yeah, camera angle's a, a little different right now. I'm gonna continue to tweak that, I'm not quite finished with the, the full setup in here. So that is, that is, this is our camera angle for today, just to be clear. So yes, the, the plan overall is to have less on-screen stuff, which I think will make the YouTube content age better as well. Bob with the Prime sub, uh, and Asa with nine months. I'm also gonna continue to, um, to, to verbally thank everybody who subscribes uh, or supports the stream in any fashion. So that, that part of the stream will remain and you'll still get a, a thank you from me for subbing. Like Wingfield here with the Prime sub in the 12 months. Bailey says, does this mean I'll be doing community days on a set day every month rather than a milestone? A very wise deduction. Yes, the community, community days are going to stay and I do feel like separating them from a milestone is the way to go here, just like we did with the game boat. Um, we've far exceeded the need for me to present a carrot on a stick, basically, so you can have the carrot, and I'll just keep the stick. Let's see, did I get everybody? We got Fat Bob, Asao, David's two with the three months. Heck yeah, so many subs at the start of stream here. This guy's hogging the stick. Look at this guy. Yeah, I think we could we could do maybe something that's that's very minimal, just like in the in the bottom here. There's there's we there's definitely something that exists between what we had and and nothing, right? That that is potentially worth investigating. Yes, yeah, time to find out if I migrated the script properly. Excellent question, Faley. I uh, I did put in some some work making sure I had all the right dependencies. And I ran it a couple of times to check for errors, and it, it does is working for the Spotify, so hopefully it works. But we'll see if the um, the website and the bot can update properly for the game state on the new PC. Fingers crossed. Fistfuls of cheese with two years. Got you totally hooked on against the storm. Just won your first no orders round. Nicely done. Nicely done. Definitely going to have some more against the storm coming up soon. But there's so many cool things to check out. 
Speaking of, later today, we're going to be checking out Wild Frost for the first time in a long time. Uh, Wild Frost has had quite a few post-release updates, with the most important one for me personally just arriving this week. Uh, a new, I, they call it bell system, uh, basically uh, ascension levels are here in Wild Frost. So a new overhaul difficulty system to make the game more challenging. Remember the days everybody was r running green screens? Yeah, I, interesting how those kind of went out of style. For, for me personally, it was a logistical thing. Um, having ha Running a green screen meant actually having a physical backdrop that was just a, a monotone color. And it turns out that there's something demoralizing about having that in your workspace. <laughs> it's not very beautiful. You know how in RimWorld, people go crazy if their surroundings aren't sufficiently aesthetic. Yeah, that's that's a real thing. That's an actual real thing. Is that a grease print in the background? No, that is a uh, Dark Souls art. Should be exclamation point art. Lot 8 Solis is the name. Here, let me get you a, a slightly better view of that. Just the full thing. I'll shrink that down before we start the run. It's a, it's like a, a 2D artistic print of the world map of Dark Souls. First. Logalogalog -log -log says, My mood after a day of work has noticeably improved since I switched which room my office is in. Better lighting. Lighting is also another really, really big one. Oh, and that's the other thing. Actually, speaking of green screens, for a green screen to work properly, you need bright lights. And those also suck. But yeah, so the, the the advantage of a green screen, one or one advantage of a green screen is that it lets you have a, a really good look to the screen without um, a lot of investment in the backdrop. And I'll also say it, it also made for really efficient use of screen real estate. Like I can, my face can be a lot bigger if I'm doing a green screen um, without obscuring like game UI elements because I have to have this rectangle now. This this rectangle takes up a lot of space, more space than I take up. Speaking of, let's shrink that down so that I don't block enemies' health points, for example. And that's one of the really cool things that, uh, that I liked about a green screen. Then I sat in a giant chair, so I took up a lot of space anyway. That was fun. Blessed Machine, thanks for the Prime sub in the two months. Just beat 820 Heart for the first time on Clad. Hopefully that's what we're going to be doing today. No, I definitely don't feel cramped now. I, I have an office space that I, I quite enjoy spending time in. I spend maybe too much time in this room, but I've invested a lot in it, and there's a lot of cool stuff to do in this room. Dwarf Keep Dome Keeper currently 50% off. That's a great, great time to snag that game. Is Steam doing the, the like, winter holiday sale? Is that a thing going on yet, or is that still not active. I feel like we're about at that time that there should be a huge 21th of December. 21th? 21st. <laughs> 21th. Words are hard. All right, so let's play an Ascension 20 Ironclad run. It's been about a week. Um, I'm, I'm a, I think, feel like this is probably a twin cost coin toss? Whoa, my words are definitely not not working today. Uh, definitely a coin toss as to whether we win this or not. I, I'm not expecting to be able to play at 100% today. I feel like we're maybe at 60-70%. So if the, if the RNG gods give us a little bit of help, then this run should be easy peasy. But if the Spire serves me up a very difficult ironclad run, I might not be able to perform at the level required. Jay Dublinson, thanks for 23 months. Hope Clad works better than my words today. Why use many words when few words will do?
readings choose. So what have we got here? Card pick. One hit point enemies. Hits the one run of the day. Transform two or boss swap. We look at our map. We see... Ooh, we're looking like it might be a boss swap. We have... Um, lots of elites. Oh my good lord. Let's mark this in red. That's a hell of a path. That is an awesome path, but it's kind of suicidal unless you get really strong really quickly. Uh, more reasonable. There's also super burning elite. Let's also mark this one in red. Let's see. It's only two elites, actually. It's probably not worth it. Ironclad can do it? Maybe. Ironclad can sometimes do it. Lagavulin can easily just destroy you as clad. But I also see there's a, a very easy breezy path that it hits no elites or only one late elite. Still gets four rest sites. So generally speaking... Actually, wait. Can we snipe that early elite? No. No. Okay. No snipes with the lament. So yeah. In this situation, I really like the boss swap here. Really like the boss swap. Boss Swap gives us a boss relic in exchange for the Burning Blood. That could be an immediate upside, in which case we can take the Red Path and just crush everything. Or it could be something a little bit weaker, in which case we'll take a more defensive path uh, and try to take better use out of the boss relic later on in the run. So let's do a Boss Swap. We get Ectoplasm. We gain extra energy every turn, but we can't gain money anymore. That's not great. But it might be enough to let us take the red path. The more I play with Ecto Swaps, the more I don't mind it that much. It turns out that while not gaining gold is a significant downside, having an extra boss relic is a significant upside. And uh, often enough of an upside to totally counteract the fact that you don't have the boss relic, you know? Or you don't have the, the healing or the money. What cards would make me feel better about taking the red path? From here, yeah, uppercut. Actually, clothesline with four energy is pretty good, too. Um, whirlwind, Carnage, Shockwave, Evolve. Do I go to the... We should go to a shop this act. Um, normally, I would go to this shop. But if I'm taking Red Path, we hit this shop. And I definitely don't want to go to two shops with Ectoplasm. So I think I don't go to this one. Although we can see what the event holds. I'm also wondering if maybe if I really want to commit to Red Path, we should go four combats before the Elite. Yeah, one of the big downsides for Ecto is card removal limitations. Uh, with with the Ectoplasm swap specifically, I don't find it that big of a problem because you can many times get an Astrolabe or Pandora's box. Or Runic Pyramid. Kid Charlemagne with a 17 months, that's almost as old as you are. I'm also not sure we're going to be able to go red. Let's Let's go green to start here. So, guaranteed three strikes next turn. This enemy always attacks next turn. 32 minus 17. Uh oh, it's too early in the day to do math. Uh, should be 15. And three strikes will do 18, so we always kill. Cool. Defend. And yet another David, thanks for the Prime sub and the eight months of support. Get a Heart of Iron right away. That's encouraging for going red. Very strong potion. 
and Anger, Sword Boomerang, or Iron Wave. Normally, I'm all about an Anger in this position, but with the ecto or with the additional energy, I don't necessarily value a zero-cost attack quite as much. Uh, and that makes me want to take Iron Wave a bit more. This is a card I've definitely been okay with. Let's go in Patty's Ab. I stream from, yes, U.S. Eastern Time. That's where we're from. For the boomerang here, I'm not a boomerang believer these days. And we're fighting Guardians, so I'll definitely take an Iron Wave. No question for me. Let's see, 23 damage to kill. So we can do Bash Strike Iron Wave and get a KO. And immediately we can see why a boss swap on Ironclad might be fundamentally desirable. Burning Blood heals us for six each combat, but in this case, having one additional energy allows us to prevent eight damage, so... That's better than six, right? Hey. Oh, actually, in this turn, a uh, normal Ironclad has to defend here and takes three. With four energy, though, we can just play four strikes and prevail. Hmm. Hmm. Hearing blow, you say? With no money. That sounds tough. And yeah, we can upgrade this Searing Blow four times, which is kind of cool. Searing Blow is a card that upgrades, or it can be upgraded multiple times, with each upgrade being more powerful than the last. A properly upgraded Searing Blow is a thing of legend. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Give me the max elf. So that means we're not going this red path, right? Correct, we're going through this shop. Okay, so that's kind of the same either way. This is now the path we want, I believe. Intro Noir, thank you so much for three months of support. Scrapoos, yeah, we have extra health now. Let's click a few times. Ow. Ow. Huzzah! After entering a rest site, start the next combat with additional energy. Seems cool. Card gets played twice. Oh my god, Lord. <laughs> what? We still using RNG fix? Yes, yes. Uh, I did drop one mod from our install list. I believe it was um, Achievement Enabler. We're still running with uh, all the other mods. Gambling Gecko, thanks for the prime sub. Look at the cozy sub club. I'm also really kind of down for a power throw. Both of these are insanely good, as far as I see it. I'm taking the Dark Embrace. Let's just do, let's just go. I think with four energy, we can just get away with it. And I'm not taking that many fights this act. How will I ever get all achievements now? So I'll just have to watch my own vids on YouTube. What is this hand, by the way? Hello?
Headbutt. Excellent card with Searing Blow. Let's just put the Searing Blow back on top of the draw pile where it belongs. So, plus two gets five additional damage, goes from 16 to 21. Next upgrade is plus six, goes to 27. And it just keeps going up and up and up from there. All this money I can't have, and all this turn one energy that I don't necessarily need? Maybe we'll get a Whirlwind or something. Ooh. So, probably we just buy a remove. That's usually the best use of your early money. Um, we are in the territory we, we, where we could encounter thieves here, so if we don't remove now, we might forever lose the opportunity to do so. Hey, Gambling Gecko. Glad the, the recap vid was insightful. That's right, the recap video did go up on uh, YouTube this weekend. Our stats breakdown of the Mastery Challenge. Oh, and the retrospective command is updated. Thank you, Feely, already. Masterfully done. Is Brimstone often an auto-pick? No, I think it's run-dependent. You have to be able to utilize the strength properly in order for it to be worthwhile. And there's certain situations where you just can't take it if you don't have a mitigation plan for the additional damage it adds. For example, in Act 1 against... Guardian is sort of scary. Hexaghost with Brimstone is terrifying. So it, it's not recommended by me that you take this into Hexaghost if you're in Act 1. Although it still can be worthwhile, but you might die on turn two. It's very spooky. Mm -hmm. uh, and then later on, the heart, of course, is very threatening with Brimstone. But th there are you have a whole run to prepare for it, so there's there's ways around that. Tying on turn two is my specialty. I see. Let's go headbutt first. I don't want to headbutt any of these cards. Thank you. And I have infinite energy, so I guess let's just play everything. Good talk. Fire potion seems decent. Uh, that's a card. When seven energy on turn one isn't enough, try offering to be a little careful with offering. We don't heal six per combat. Actually, this fire potion's bad. <laughs> I just realized. Yeah, we have zero sustain, but we don't... Yeah, here we go. Uh, we don't have to play it every time we draw it. So here's where we lose money unavoidably. upgraded and it never will be. Doesn't matter. It's like a build your own shrug it off. Sort of. Hmm. Probably one of the better opponents we could have faced here. Ooh, this is not a good three cards to get on the bottom. We'll probably just do Bash Searing Blow. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Could do pod that. It's not a bad idea. Wake up. Ooh. Oh, 
we're taking 10 or we're playing Offering, so I'll play Offering. Um, really doesn't matter. We want to just headbutt a strike here. Yeah, minus 6 saves 10. And a perfect example of why we added the Offering, I guess. Although if we'd drawn the True Grit instead, we would have saved even more health, so... Maybe it's an example of why you shouldn't add an Offering. Magic Flower is a little sad to see. We get more healing during combat, except we have no healing during combat, so currently this does nothing. Since we have no starter relic. But that could change. These I'm going to skip. If we can find healing, this will be big. We can maybe find Bites in Act 2. I would super take Bites with Magic Flower. Um... Oh, that's right, my UI mod isn't uh, tweaked. I knew I forgot to do something. I can change that on the fly, though. Let's see, it's shift click, or is it? Here we go. Uh oh. Oh dear. Was not a simple SSD swap? I, I don't think you can do that, actually, right? What I learned last time I built a computer is that if you change your motherboard, you must also reinstall Windows. I'm gonna lose a... Not true anymore. Interesting. Interesting. Not true anymore, they say. I'm gonna use this here. I'll be back for that. Oh yeah, the exhaust pile. I hit them? Or was it above? Above looks better. Looks pretty good. Looks good to me. Just works. It's pretty cool, actually. I guess this is not a good time for. All right, let's go Iron Wave. Should we get the bash. Yeah, I guess so. Too bad with the Heart of Iron. Could have been a tough fight otherwise. But we are through easy peasy. We get no money. We get no health. We do get an Impervious. That seems pretty good. That's a uh, block 30 right there. Yoink. And we get to remove two cards. So the strikes can leave. Yeah, the strikes can leave. It means we're probably not taking bites. But it means we're going to draw the good stuff way more often. Exclamation point. Curse. Curse tolerance. Threshold of how many useless cards can be in the deck. And then... These cards can be curse cards, or they can be cards that have no immediate impact on the deck. That's pretty good. I think the first sentence 
can do a slight rephrasing. How many useless cards can be in the deck without costing the player HP or without failing at combats? Otherwise, yes. I like that. Yeah, our other options both add garbage to the deck, like they they increase curses, right? Mark of Pain gives us two wounds that we have to draw back through. That's not going to be good. Or the Calling Bell gives us a unique, unremovable curse and three relics. I say we remove two strikes. Call it a day. All right, how easy or hard this run is really going to depend on the pathing here in Act 2. Can we get a bunch of rest sites? Yes, we can get four. We can fight elites along the way, or we could not fight elites along the way. That's up to us. I'm not sure fighting elites is a great idea. Oh, it's three elites or one elite. Yikes. We don't want... Or, well, actually, this one's optional. I like that. So the only one that would be mandatory is this one. Uh, these are the ways to get four rest sites, just to be clear. There's also... Let's mark this one in red. One, two... Three, four. That fights this elite and this elite. And has to fight this elite. Let's go this way. Super spooky to take three elites in Act 2 without healing. So I think we go this way. We're going to be a little weak until we can get that... Next upgrade on Searing Blow, plus four is not going to be one-shotting the enemies of Act 2 very well, unless we play Bash as well. But thankfully we have the Offering and such. These two are back to take what remains of our money and our life, apparently. Rude. Ow. But my face, though. Have you considered my face? It's not even... I don't even have any money. What's wrong with you two? Um, if I don't offering, I probably won't kill one, which doesn't matter because they, we don't have any money to get back. So I guess it doesn't matter. I think I need to kill at least one of them for them to drop potions, though. So let's make sure this guy dies. But otherwise, it literally doesn't matter that that guy got away. There's no effect on the uh, of the reward here. So that's okay. It's not good that we're at 49 health already, though. That's got me very concerned for the future. So probably hit butt before bash. This is not a good fight for us. Although we have probably impervious coming next turn. Kill this one with Siri Blow. Nope. Nope, we just get hosed. Wow, we bottom decked both of these? Oof. Oh no. I need some in combat healing, and I'm gonna need it soon, game. This is where a sword boomerang could have maybe been useful. So, bash, iron rage, true grit. Good dex potion, at least.
Meat on the bow. Now, that would make a huge difference for this run. To shreds, you say. Thing to act two elites. Bold of you to presume we get that far. Doesn't look like we're getting anywhere here. Can't even play both defend and iron wave here. Pad. Yeah, we hit butt the searing blow and play offering, I guess. No, I can't even do that. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. That run did not go so well, unfortunately. There's actually a lot of things that went wrong in this run. Um, you can you can blame the Searing Blow if you want, but I don't think that was actually the problem here. GG. GG. Power Through come back. Yeah, Power Through over Dark Embrace definitely would have made a big difference. Um, but quite frankly, things went wrong immediately with the Ecto Swap. So I'm not too surprised to lose this. What other things did we see that we could have maybe... We could have taken a bunch of Pummel Strikes. Yeah, simply having one Battle Trance would have been uh, a big game changer. It was the Sword Boomerang skip. That's right. That's right. Can you restart if you don't like the Neo bonus when wind streaking? No, you can't. You have to. <laughs> you have to do. You have to do the thing. But like I said, I, I'm, I'm not surprised to lose that run. So, completely fine to reset the streak here. Part of why I didn't play Spire yesterday is I knew that was going to be our first run. But now I can just do whatever I want. So, it's all good. How much worse do I play when sick? Much worse. Much worse. Everyone does. Guess I'll do a transform too this time. Hmm. Curious. No three elite path, huh? All right. Go here. Big damage. No, let's take an infernal blade. Infernal blade's cool. Infernal blade does stuff. Act one, which ironclad common or uncommon attacks are worth taking a second copy of? Wind strike. Almost strike. Potentially uppercut. Infernal blade, my beloved. Um, is that a kill? We can do eight plus 30, no. No. It's good damage, though. Okay, let's double defend here. Perfected strike, potentially. Uh, I might be hosing myself here. Now, let's just play the strike so I don't die. Of course, then I do get the triple strike draw. That's fine. Where are my strikes? Fiend fire. Fiend fire, my strikes. Let's 
scammed. Damn it. Where are my strikes? What are you doing here, demon form? Get out of here. Threat level midnight. Thanks for the 11 months. Yeah, we just lost our streak to an Ecto start. So it goes. There we go. Add a second copy of Pommel Strike, especially with Demon Form. We want some Pommel Strikes in here. Looks like we gotta iron out our strategies. That's right. Looks like I gotta iron out my draw order here, too. Onset nonsense with seven months. Thank you, thank you. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe take Cleave going into a Burning Elite here? Especially with Demon Form. Yeah, I should take the AoE option. This pot's even worse than Speed Pot. P.F. Hayes, thanks for the prime sub. Looking for the cozy sub club. Ah, yes. Classic. If you're losing to the elite, simply upgrade a card. Cleave Plus looks powerful here. Could also upgrade Infernal Blade. Is Cleave generally a good act one take? Cleave makes you dramatically better against the hard pool of act one, which is pretty valuable for Ironclad. Means if you run into four gremlins, four gremlins or five slimes, you'll do a lot better. We can actually upgrade them both. Ah. Eight plus sixteen is twenty-four, yes. Yes. Get wrecked, friends. What about a third pummel strike? We've had second pummel strike, yes, but what about third pummel strike? No, actually with two pummel strikes, I really like a headbutt to let us put something back on top of the deck. That does mean we're a little bit attack heavy, but with a demon form, maybe that's not the worst thing to be. There's also anger here, a zero cost attack that works well with lots of card draw. But I've already got a zero-cost attack. Actually, I've got two of them. So I'm taking a headbutt. Oh, demon form of the gods. Good job. All right, here's a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Fluffy Bullet. Your name made me think of this one. What does the hermit in the spire say when he has too much block? Calibers would be good here. No refunds. Just keep the Infernal Blade for one more turn. Build the strength up. Wakey wakey. High caliper joke. <laughs> Excellent. Quality speed potion opportunity. We can double defend for 10 health saved. Anytime you get more than 5 health out of a speed potion in Act 1, you should use it. Rule of thumb. Ash. Easy life. Well, 
Lexpot would kill... I'm healing six, though, so we just defend. Kill next turn. Take 15, heal six, so we're down nine. Keep this potion for nine health. Defeated our Burning Elite, no problem. Now we have a toy Ornithopter. Rewarded for saving the potion. Get our Emerald Key, and Offering is back. I'm super taking the Offering this time. We have two sources of healing so far. Power Through is also back. How's it going, Krogzar? And a boat thingy to block on turn one. Even better. Great set of relics so far. This is also a relic we could have changed last run entirely. Just one decent combat relic would have made a big difference. Anger the mushrooms. Three mushrooms. This is the kind of fight where cleave makes a massive difference for Ironclad Act 1. This is much, much easier with cleave than without... Can Infernal Blade make Bash? No. No, I can't make basic cards. Can't make Strike either. That was a great fight. We get free healing, money, the odd mushroom, meaning when we're vulnerable, we take less damage. We're offered an Armament, which I'm going to take because I have added literally no block cards to this deck so far. And I feel like we want at least one. The fact that it upgrades another card is nice, I guess. I don't think it matters that much. Do I ever just play the demon form here? Block five. Play three attacks instead. I think I should just play the demon form. Starting a new save file and restarting from zero. Hey, that can be a really fun thing to do in roguelites. Kind of like ask yourself to get back through the basic difficulty levels. Let's slaughter this fool. Hello. Blessing of the Forge can upgrade all of our cards. Third Pummel Strike? Is that too many? That might be too many. <laughs> Binding of Isaac I, feels like a game is specifically made for that, cats. Definitely a great game to, to start for fresh on. Totally different experience. I'm going to skip this one. I would take one that said plus on it. I don't think we demon form in this fight. Probably just going to use flex pot with our cleave to slap these fools. Espresso is fuel. What a name, what a player. Thanks for the prime sub and welcome to the cozy sub club. So it was fuel. So I'm going to offering first here. Rampage. Okay, yeah, this is an amazing turn for the flex bots. So let's just do it. Effortlessly dispatched. We now have a lizard tail and too many hit points for Hexaghost. And an uppercut, which I'm super taking. Doink. Emu like bird with 45 months coming up on four full years. White goblin with two months coming up on one full year. Eventually.
I've seen some pretty legendary uh, Twitch usernames, for sure. And speaking of legendary, this shop is pretty legendary. On sale impervious. Bag of preparation is pretty good, especially with the anchor. I like it a lot. It's not the world's worst heavy blade, but I don't think you should pay for a common attack in this position. Um, can I do bag of prep, remove offering? No, not quite. Probably just bag of prep offering then. Although I really do value removes. I'm already down two strikes. No, that was last run. One kid's friend. How do I analyze a shop? Ooh. Kinda, so here's what 7,000 hours of experience does. I kind of like unfocus my eyes at the middle of the shop and then the most valuable things just kind of like pop out. <laughs> just kind of like my eyes get drawn to certain things. So that's why sometimes I'll name them in weird orders. Like I'll name the third card and then the first relic and then the second card. It's so like, oh, these are the order that I noticed these things are good in. <laughs> You mean Chrysalis, yeah. Or it might also be the card art too, right? Impervious just really stands out visually. And then he can unhinges his jaw and consumes it whole. <laughs> the legendary first time chat. <laughs> The impervious means we don't get a remove, but we can afford the removes later or whatevs. Do I want another fight? Not really. I have way too many cards already. Again, I recommend adding five cards in Act 1, not ten. Although, bear in mind, three of them are rare, and two of them say draw a card on them. So I added these five. Headbutt, Infernal Blade, Armaments, Uppercut, Cleave. Those are the five I needed to add. This is all bonus. It's great. It's great. Oh yeah, and two were transformed, so we didn't take them. That's right. That's right. Two of them used to be a strike. All right, it was a false equivalence anyway, or false, false dilemma. Is demon form worth it? Probably not, when the enemy has only 48 hit points. I guess I'll just arm a pummel. I guess I'll also just play the offering, because Hex Ghost. Oh, you're dead. All right, good talk. <laughs> Four rare cards. Do I want a second demon? Actually, I might want a bloodletting. Bloodletting seems freaking awesome here. Get in here, bloodletting. Cards OP. Guess I'll upgrade this now. Bloodletting lets us play the demon form and also the other cards, which is pretty sweet. Mm -mm. That almost makes me want a swift pot. Not having uppercut upgraded is also kind of weak. Swift pot later. Rampage is actually good in this fight, unironically. This I won't play. I don't want the dazed. All right, we can arma the uppercut. That's a good start. Maybe I'll headbutt the armaments. Yeah, because we can do headbutt, armaments, play offering, play armaments, play demon form. And now we win. Uncooked Noom. Thanks for nine months. The Baylor Itch has returned. That was like a... kind of ailment. I wish you a swift recovery from the itch. It's a cream for that, that's right. 
What's the biggest Hexaghost attack you've faced? Highest I remember is um, 13 by 6, which was in Act 3. Feed versus Immolate here. Looks like a really good position for Feed. We've got a Lizard Tail as well as good sustain. So big reward on max health scaling. We also have an Armaments Plus that can upgrade the Feed, allowing us to scale our max health real big-like. That sounds good to me. And a Headbutt to let us control where the Feed is. No Runic Pyramid. I'm down for Black Star on this run. We sacrifice the additional energy of a boss relic, but we have Offering and Bloodletting to do that for us. And free block on turn one. So let's see if we can kill elites and just start accumulating mass relics here. We also have a Lizard Tail such that we can survive a low roll in an elite fight, basically. That said, we can only get two elites this act. That's not desirable, but it is how it is. That is how it is. Looks like the best path for that is probably this one. We'll just get wing boots, that's right. At the very end. And then maybe this is... This will just be thwack, it's fine. It's totally fine. Also, we're not that strong, so maybe it's better that we don't fight so many elites. Just saying. Letting lets me play the impervious too. Leaves me sick, so I might as well. Might as well. Probably worth it too. Okay. okay, but why though? Boss swap's too risky for streaking? Good question. Generally, I would say yes. For longer win streaks, anyway. 15, 15, 15. 19. to get the energy. That's the complicated factor. So I think I have to headbutt the bloodletting here. Then use the swift potion. Get to feed, but that's fine. Take a shrug. Okay, this looks pretty good. Oh my, you guys are toast. Very, very toasty. Delicious, delicious toast. Excellent. Okay. Start gaining max health here. I take another bloodletting. I think that's unnecessary. We take a free heavy blade. I think without gaining energy from the boss relic, I probably don't want a heavy blade here. I'm going to go run clad until 20. If I get bored, I'll, I'll change before we get to 20. I'm not going to... 
I'm not going to stake my entire content career on, on this one challenge if it doesn't work out. Stunna, thanks for 18 months. Year and a half and many more to come. I almost want anger. I, I didn't want anger last time. I don't want it now. Hello, pay up to pass. A reasonable fee of all your gold will do, they say. But here's the thing. You guys give me a relic. So I'm going to fight your faces. Although that's a crap turn one. Just going to be honest. It's not good. Thinking maybe we're supposed to use the Forge Pot turn one, but I'm going to see what I draw here. Yeah. Let's headbutt that. Turn two looks tough. going to be honest. It's not the correct cards to draw on turn one. Okay, that's a slight. At least do this. Arma, Pummel, Feed. This turn's going to be bad, though. Really bad. We're taking quite a bit now as well. Bear does way more damage next turn, so we're hoping we can kill Bear, despite the block. Looks like we hopefully can. Oh man, Immolate's back. Unfortunately, it's not quite enough to get pointy. Let's see, we do two all enemies. 21 plus 11, 32. And I have two energy left. Uh, so we can Blessing of the Forge to take no more damage. Or we can take 12. I think the saving 12 is probably worth it. We get a Blood Potion. That's good healing. And the Red Mask. Gain Tendo. Thanks for the half year of support in advance. Keeping it real with six months. Yeah, 12 is a pretty good magic number for potions. Unless you have good reason to believe that that specific potion will save you more health in a future encounter. Like you're saving it for a specific boss encounter. That can change things, but... We did not have such an expectation for the Forge Pot, so... What ends? Alright, Sneko, will you toast me again? Or am I going to do better this time? Looks like things might be a little better. Oh. Demon form, come on. Come on, demon form. Shoot. Ooh. At least we have uh, the Odd Mushroom saving us some health here. That's why it's 22 and not the normal 27. the shot, though. Do we take an Evolve? I don't think so. I think we have enough cards. We're not worried about statuses at the moment. Bird nerds. These three are somewhat dangerous. We don't have that many AoE options. I can eat one of them. Looks like that's a yes. Hit points. Body slam can be okay with impervious and armaments, but I don't trust it here. Don't 
trust it. Okay, we made it to our first elite. We have still plenty of health and two potions. That's very encouraging. I expect to use the strength potion against the first elite here. Uh, as far as upgrades go, I think the offering upgrade is a big deal. It also... I don't think we're ready to upgrade feed yet, especially since we have armaments. We should upgrade our card draw instead. So let's upgrade... Oh, uppercut's a good one, too. Actually, yeah, let's upgrade uppercut. And then offering next. That extra turn of weak and vuln, very important, especially against this particular foe. And yes, I will use the strength potion. This is very much a damage race. Can you do 170 damage before five or so turns? The longer the fight goes on, the worse it gets. Trust me, it gets bad. Block four, deal eight. I'll block four here. I don't want the wound that it would add to my deck. That would be undesirable. Ouch. Was that not 7x2 on turn 1? Yeah, I'm definitely still sick. Definitely still sick. It's all good. I'll feed, please. Yeah, weak from Red Mask. Didn't even notice, gonna be honest. On scales from the Book of Stabbing, very appropriate. Barricade. Yeah. I like that against Champ. I like it with the Essence of Steel, too. Smiling Mask. That seems pretty good. Removals are always 50 gold. We haven't actually bought a remove yet, but that's still pretty solid. Could save us at least 75 gold, probably more. Okay, this is good that we get attacked on turn one because of Red Mask and Anchor. It's basically a free turn against this foe. Otherwise, though, we're in trouble here. This is not what we wanted to see. I'll use the Essence of Steel here. We're, well, 15 incoming. So block 14. No, never mind. Yeah, free anger. Oh, boy. I believe my own advice was just play the demon form. I really want that cleave. Great turn for Impervious. Good, good. Okay, we're going to save the Essence of Steel for Champ. I suppose so. the offering on this turn. Now I can play it if I want to. Well, it looks like I probably don't need to. Okay, you're gonna die now. No feed for us, that's okay. We're through the fight, we get two relics, that's what matters here. The Art of War, rewarding us for not playing attacks, and the Strike Dummy, making these Pummel Strikes hit quite a bit harder. And if we want one, there's a Corruption. I do like Corruption Barricade together. I will take a Corruption. Take it in Flame, too. But my face, though. 
hell. Alright, I'll use the energy potion on this turn, I suppose. You know, 15 or block 3. I should deal damage. Headbutt feed. Nail feed plus next turn. Excellent. Beautiful. Shrug plus or a disarm. First disarm is very good, but with barricade corruption, I'm taking a shrug plus here. Thanks for nothing. A big stinky lizard. Oh, come on. But my block cards. I made them all free. Boo. There we go. Yeah, Sneko is really headed out for us today. We've not had an easy time with the Sneko. I feel like I'd better play this offering. Without playing offering, I don't think we get to feed here. But now we get to feed. to rest before champ, which I guess I'm okay with. I don't think I want second wind. Instead of resting, we could buy Panagraph. What if I bought Prismatic Shard for funsies? That sounds kind of hype, actually. A very strong run overall. Ah. Let's do it. <laughs> then maybe I'll buy a swift potion to save me against champ a little bit. Also five hit points. Do that. Ah. Enlightenment's also kind of hilarious, but I can no longer afford it. True grit is acceptable. <laughs> Potions, what I'm gonna buy though. <laughs> Corruption shard can go hard. That's right garbage. <laughs> ah. I can't even take the max health here. Bummer. Uh, give me the curse, I guess. Ooh. Or yeah, we can just click the die button. Use our lizard tail. Lizard tail, gain five max health, lose the curse. Hmm. Asthmatic Funk, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I do think I want the curse, honestly. We have a smiling mask. It's fine. It's funny that you think I need to up uh, need to rest without uh the other option. I think we're just gonna upgrade probably the feel no pain now that we have barricade. Also upgrade the barricade. We're only a three energy deck after all. I'm not taking Sneko Eye, am I? Well, maybe I am. Hmm. Many upgrade options. We'll do barricade. Got Art of War. Okay, 
Okay, that's not too bad. I don't think I want to play Corruption just yet. Could Swift Potion? I don't think I need to. We'll just take a hit. Who's one plate or armor? We have to rebuild the block momentarily. Lash, my child. Having Odd Mushroom for this fight is also pretty cool. next time we run. Now I can play Corruption. I'm going to do Bloodletting this turn first. No, no. Oh, it's possible, all right. It's happening to you. Uh, Reckless Charge would cause him to die to thorns. I want to eat him, though. Delicious. Delicious. Reboots. Secret Technique. Secret Technique Armament. Secret Technique Offering is really cool. The Nash is cute. I will take the Secret Technique. Put a skill from the draw pile into our hand. It's quite useful. And then we have three flavors of energy here. Dripper, Hammer, Sozu. Seems like Dripper's pretty reasonable. We can no longer rest, but we still have Blood and Toy Ornithopter healing us, and Feed healing us. And Lizard Tail healing us. Could go Fusion Hammer and just use the Dreamcatcher for more cards, but I'd prefer to be able to upgrade Demon Form and Feel No Pain and Corruption. So I'll take a Copy Dripper here. How's it going, Pricksmeyer? Hey there, hey there. And we can take three elites this time. An improvement, to be sure. I guess Fusion Hammer would have been fine. <laughs> oh well. Doesn't really matter if I get no rest sites either way, huh? Can rest or upgrade. Yeah, the only three elite path is this one. So the only rest action we get to do this act is recall. Oh, there's also this path, actually. And there's no shop, though. But yeah, your option is go this line, and then you don't get to remove Decay. So, would you rather remove Decay before the boss is, or upgrade a card? You tell me. Thorns. 
I don't want any of my skills. Bonus bits. What's this bonus bits promotion? Lamguin, thanks for the 600 bits. Looks like Twitch. John Twitch himself is here. Welcome, John Twitch. But the, I, cool that we get uh, bonus bits. It's pretty sweet. Any bits over 300, 300 gives a 10% bonus currently. That's sweet. That is sweet. Uh, headbutt armor? Let's try it. No, I don't want it to die. Goodbye to Thorns. Oh, Jeff, my bad. Okay, a solid start to the act. Whirlwind plus, anyone? Uh, seems ridiculously good with demon form and energy generators and such. Yes, I'll take a Whirlwind Plus. If only. If only I had the shops. So, fight a boss for a rare relic or upgrade all my cards and be completely unable to heal forevermore? I don't think so. Fight the boss. Uh oh, it's Hexagos. Oh no. Oh dear. That's not good. Next turn could hurt. <laughs> Hopefully we draw the impervious. Thankfully we have secret technique, so we're quite likely to get it. Bash. Okay, that's pretty promising. Hmm. That's a lot of damage, sir. With my face, though. Guess I'll use the Swift Potion. Super fine. There's the Impervious. All right. Totally fine. Even close. Don't forget to eat the ghost. You have 19. Oh no. Can't eat it. Disaster. And the next turn it dies to thorns. I've done a terrible disservice to myself here. Ooh. Alright, well, that went badly. We do get more block via the thread and needle. I like that quite a bit. True grit ain't good enough. The claw is law. The claw is flaw. The orb walkers are law. These guys are tough. They don't even give us the benefit of giving us two relics, because they're rude. Ah, oh, we gotta play that. Me offering then. I see. Bonk. But 
and pummel strike. Eat you. Love letting a second time. Use that to play barricade and win the fight. Good work, me. How's that for a turn one? This fight actually. We're gonna get a lot of burns soon, too. It's gonna win next turn. Which I can do with Fire Potion Guarantee. Getting back to back rare relics from events in Act 2 always feels great. Get a Dubu doll, plus one strength for each curse we have. By the way, we have two curses. And a dupe pot. And an Auto Shields Plus or a Cool Headed. I gotta say, Auto Shields Plus seems kind of bad with Barricade. Cool Headed is interesting. Like a weaker Metallicize, but it's also a skill. It's a skill that draws one. So, yes, I'll take it. Dark Orb seems kind of hilarious. Ooh, we could take a Medical Kit instead of removing our Curse. Allowing us to play status cards to exhaust them and then gain block from the field pain. That's pretty sweet. Ah. Could also just take an evolve and remove the purse. Very reasonable option. How many orb slots of other characters? Zero by default. When you pick up Prismatic Shard, you gain one orb slot. So we have one orb slot. It's true we lose one strength from removing the curse, but we also lose one curse from removing the curse. Thing is, I can't actually do anything good with the statuses. Yeah, I'll take the medical kit. Keep the curse. Might remove it later, but not yet. Classic, fighting the, the single orb walker after the double orb walkers never fails to entertain me. Just an easier fight than we've already won. Adds more block per turn. Frosty. Oops. That's right, I feed. Hold on. Reflex plus? I don't think so. Six passive block per turn is pretty good. Normally, with barricade, it's even better. Not afraid of burns at all, because we have the medical kit. They just give me a block now. And I can even use the... Cl well, no, I can't. Not with decay in my hand, I can't. I was going to say I can use the clash. Except for the part where I totally can't. See if we can land feed in this fight. Have you ever, ever had a successful orb base build with a non-defect character? No. I don't think I've ever done anything like that successfully. Do not think so. I 
Yeah, where's the Dark Embrace at? That's what I'm saying. We're not working out. Keep throwing feed while it's intangible. I can headbutt this turn, it works though. Hey, there we go. Okay. But feed. We're there. Excellent. Unceasing top. Probably not that good. Pocket watch. Excellent. We play three or fewer cards on our turn, then we draw extra cards at the start of the next turn. Stack. Cute with barricade. Kind of awful with corruption. I'll skip. Empty body is also cute, just uh, in case we get a st st stance change card, maybe. Good friend Don is here to give us $222 dollar redo. And now it's giant head time. Two. So this could be number three. I really want the Ornithor, though. But I'm just going to not play any more cards here. Probably some stuff. There we go. I do cool headed, feel no pain, barricade defense. Have to wait on corruption. And then just demon form impervious, I guess. Between Art of War and Pocket Watch, we can have essentially bonus energy and draw every turn, which is filthy strong. Just filthy good. That turn was also filthy good. Best kind of dumb. Stop there for pocket watch. There we go. And nutritious. We get a mummified hand, meaning a random card in our hand becomes zero cost after playing a power, of which we have many. Infinite Blades. Start of your turn, add a shiv to your hand, which deals damage and exhausts. That's actually kind of cool. Bat with Pocket Watch, but I'm still taking it. I like it. I like it. Take the blue key over the war paint. And our third elite will be Nemesis the rematch. The sequel. Could have played headbutt there, but I want to pocket watch. As you can see why. Drawing the offering this turn kind of is a big deal.
play the shivs every time I get them, though. When they're not particularly useful, they will be ignored. Poncho. Why does Nemesis have a poncho? Great question. So we have lethal here. I want to take lethal though. Let's do this. Bring Nemesis to single digit hit points so that even if I do draw the feet on this turn, we can kill. Or plus four. Boat thingy giving free block is excellent. Turnip preventing frail with barricade is excellent. Power Potion on Ironclad into the Heart Fight is excellent. And I like both Acrobatics and Dodge and Roll here. Dodge and Roll feels really good with the Barricade. And it's free upgraded too. So let's take Dodge and Roll Plus. Six block this turn, six block next turn. And just have a bunch of regular fights to get through at the very end here. Plus a Centennial Puzzle, even more card draw. Excellent. Get lots of stuff. Although we would gain strength if we got cursed, uh, I'd still prefer not to be. Someone asked, would I take focus? Well, here's a defrag. I can take focus. I think equilibrium is pretty good, too. 13 block and retain our hand. No, I don't think focus is good enough here. It's funny, though. Doom and Gloom Plus also not terrible, actually. Decent AoE damage. Uh, no, Slippy Toad, you're thinking about... Um, Uh, foreign influence on the Watcher making orb cards. Orbs work totally normally with Prismatic Shard, even in base game. Terror Rash with the 10 months, almost to that year. Take EQ. Yeah, Establishment EQ Synergy, that'd be so cool. I've never actually had that Synergy work before. It's very powerful, though. Uh, give me the Pocket Watch. Give it to me.
29, 29, 29. That's 87. One more of those. Makes my life just a little bit easier. Milan, thanks for the eight months of support. Keeping it cozy for nearly a year. 50 AoE damage. Nice bloodletting feed. Seems good. Heart of Iron is back. Very good into the heart fight with the... Barricade. Although, is it as good as duplication potion on, say, Feel No Pain? Probably not. No, probably not. Alright, first boss is Time Eater. This sort of deck should crush the Act 3 bosses, gonna be honest here. I do not expect much trouble. What's so error? Is this a deck for corruption? A fight for corruption? I don't think so. Maybe later in the fight. Daily no. Daily why. Okay, upgrade the impervious. Perfect. All right, that's an okay turn one. We got uh, Barricade down. Just put Demon Form in play as well. If you wanted to arm against the Demon Form, maybe. It's all good. Just punch him. Easy game. When in doubt, just punch him. Play more cards here. Now we can play the corruption, I believe. Both our moons in the draw pile, you got it. Leave three cards for next turn. Dinner time. Nom nom. All right, 
One boss down, no problem. Still got 100 health for the Awakened One here. It will be a little bit more difficult. Just a little bit. We have to rush to kill the cultists here, unfortunately. They're an immediate threat. Then we have to scale up to deal with the Awakened One. That makes this attack quite nasty, but those both have to get put in play here. You get eaten. Good hit but reckless charge here. Okay, we don't take damage, at least. Keep me block. the demon form, that's also probably worthwhile. Probably the last power we should play. Don't play the uh, infinite blades here. Even better, just delete it. Let's equilibrium, keep this fiend fire. Delete corruption and such. Seems pretty good. job on ceasing top. Might be the only card it ever draws. Good for you. That's 56 damage, that is. Luke Lucky 45. Retain two. Perfecto. Want to kill next turn, I assume. Well, that we have a hella block coming our way. It'd be better if we can kill and then use the blocks. Does this boss only attack? Yes, this box has a single hit attack they do and a multi-hit attack they do. They'll alternate between those, but that's it. Okay, now we win quite decisively, and we're on to Act 4. The voids are added by the single attack of the second phase. But only in Phase 2, after you kill it one time, does it start adding voids. Okay, not too shabby. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? You ready your big stick and slap the heart for 24, 42 damage. A good year. That's right, status effects are to be avoided. Would I change the Awakened One if I could make the fight shorter? Yeah, I would. Not sure how I would change it exactly, but I would definitely want it to be shorter. Remove the regeneration, definitely. Maybe make the boss scale on its own in addition to when players play powers. Such that you can't stall it indefinitely or anything. Ooh, 
this needs to be upgraded for the hard fight. Oh yeah, we have meal ticket. Okay, so we are at full health. Take an Evolve. We can take a Shockwave. We can take an Ori. Ori with Prismatic Shard is so cool. I'm going to buy it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Calc Gamble. Establishment is here. Let's freaking do it. Establishment plus, um, plus Equilibrium. Let's freaking go. Battle Trance. Let's go. Ragnarok. That's awesome. And yeah, take the Calc Gamble. That is sick. That is sick. Give me the Shockwave. Give me the Strike Remove. And what? Do I want a Ancient Pot over these potions? These potions are really good. The Evolve may or may not be worth picking up. It's kind of unclear. We only draw statuses one time, so it's entirely up to whether we draw the Evolve before or after the statuses, whether or not it actually adds draw. It might not. Could be a dead card, so I don't think I'm going to add it. Yeah, I'm just going to skip. Um, get a fresher duplication potion. Good talk. Ooh, baby. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> Play establishment. Play equilibrium. The power. And then I play Corruption and all my cards are free anyway. What a scam. That's fine. Uh, like gamble time. Find me that barricade, hey? But ooh, that's good. Actually, this is a really good hand now that you think about it. What about this? Break right here. So we retain our hand. And everything in hand gets discounted. So we have one cost bash, free pommel strike, free feed. Thanks to the equilibrium. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. We can do Bash, Cleave, Barricade, Impervious Ragnarok. Delicious. Wow, that was an awesome fight. We also lost focus, by the way. to set up. Get our last two relics, Nunchaku, for energy. Bottled Lightning to let us pick a skill to have in the opening hands. Offering is a pretty good one. Equilibrium is also a pretty good one. Or actually, Calculated Gamble is what I'm going to bottle here. Secret Technique might have been slightly better. I don't think it matters too much. How about we get both of them? That sounds good. The problem is this offering overdraws like crazy at the moment, but oh well. Say play Shockwave over Uppercut. Certainly don't play both. Shockwave then offering? I guess so. There's Establishment and Barricade.
perfect. Okay, now we can use the power potion with the armaments here. Upgrade the power. Or not plus or corruption plus. Hmm. Play corruption anyway. Or fire breathing plus, I guess is fine too. We'll deal quite a bit of damage. As much as Juggernaut though? No way. Juggernaut's way more damage. Play Juggernaut, I guess if I have to. Doesn't seem like a bad thing. Let's hold off on a second though. I'm gonna play the Equilibrium instead. Let's use our Equilibrium to discount things. One cost corruption, zero cost shrug and arma. Give me this. Probably gonna dupe the feel no pain. It's just corruption with extra steps. You're right. stuff, I guess. Storm is setting off the Juggernaut. Pretty great. Ceasing top. Three cards? No, just two. Two cards from top this run. Bonk. Chomp. Be free, my lizard tail friend. Be free. That was a fun time. It was definitely a fun time. Twitch chat. GG. GG. So hot. Now, what has it been done? The spire sleepeth, and so shall I. GG. Definitely a fun run. Shame we lost it to the Ecto Swap on the first attempt, but that's how it goes sometimes. That's how it goes sometimes. How's it going, Zubal? Catching us just at the end of a run here. Traditionally, this is when I take a break, so I am unfortunately about to disappear for a few minutes. But I will be back to do another run of Slay the Spire as the Ironclad, so there will be more action in just a minute. How much damage did Juggernaut do during the heart fight? Quite a lot. Didn't play uh, Ragnarok one time, sadly. At least it was good in the previous fight. But Juggernaut did tons there. Truly tons. A couple hundred at least. Alright, I'm gonna go refill the legs, stretch the water, 
when I return Twitch chat, it's ironclad number two. Please, my friends, don't go nowhere. I will be right back.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. Thank you for hanging out. Let's do one more as the clad here. Let's see how it goes for us. Hello again, choose a rare card. Is a pretty good start, especially for seven max health on the clad. A powerful rare card can definitely be a good start. What about the Searing Blow Redeem Run, though? That's what I'm talking about. Give me a Searing Blow. You heard me. I'll take the rare card, too, of course. Hmm. The Big Bonk, I suppose. Is fine. Could also go lots of elites if we want to. There's a four elite path here. Looks pretty juicy. Let's see what we got. Bonk. First you bonk, then you rebonk. Not a Searing Blow. Yet. See a Barricade, take a Barricade. The, the Barricade is definitely not always the best card. I view Barricade as spending three energy on producing no block or damage immediately, so you really need a lot of support for Barricade to be worthwhile. Although, just saying. Not taking Perfected Strike, I have Bludgeon. All right, I'll take one more card reward here. Show me the Searing Blow. I want it. Ow. Show me the defense. I want them. No Searing Blow for me, but I will take an Anger. You can play it alongside the Bludgeon for a little bit more damage. Impervious not on sale this time. How rude. How rude. Oh Our animation time is part of the default game settings. So, when it comes to making Spire animate faster, you have a couple of options. Oh, V-Sync is on. Hold on. I'm going to try something. Um, so... First of all, there's an option here, fast mode. We'll speed up the base animations of the game. If fast mode isn't fast enough for you, you can further improve your speed time by setting the max frame rate to 240 and disabling V-Sync, which will cause certain animations to, uh, to speed up here. I'm gonna do something just for my own sanity here and reboot Spire real quick. Clash also is your cost card. That's true. Big if true. Okay. Here we go. Move the strike again. There's also a uh, super fast mode mod that somebody made. If you really, really want to go fast, and you're on PC, you can use super fast to go. Well, super fast. Do I enjoy playing only Ironclad for a long time? Yeah, I do, actually. It's been a fun project to sort of focus on this character, take a bit of a break from the others. I have been enjoying it, although I could see why, from a viewing perspective, it might not be everybody's cup of tea. Completely understand that. But there will be seasons for the other characters, indeed. Let's go four elites here. With an upgraded bonk, I say it's gonna happen. Hmm. 
Spot I do like Spot Weakness a lot. Alright. Take a Strength Guard. Will there be an adjustment period when I change characters? Definitely. Definitely. 100%. Damage, right? We get two draws. Maybe it is. Actually, wait. It's 21. So if we draw... Yeah, we have a couple options. So we might as well play this defend then. Save a bit of health. No ways to still chaos for a basically guaranteed kill here. Which I will be doing. I'll be doing that. The Smiling Mask for cheap card removes. Get a Brutality for extra card draw. Or another Anger. I like the Brutality. Ability to upgrade relics instead of cards. As a daily mod. I do like that, Ninog. There'd be a lot of relics that are good to upgrade. Bag of Preparation for more draw on turn one. Lantern for more energy on turn one. So many good options. I would upgrade the ever-loving heck out of bronze scales, is what I would do. Sounds fun. This is a good fight for the skill potion, I suppose. Also a good fight for spot weakness, thankfully. Bludgeon dealing 42 will perfectly kill this one, so let's leave that one for bludgeon. Let's go potion now. Second wind is fine. Fluffy Mittens with a 45 months and the tier 2 sub support. Thank you, thank you. For almost four full years. I guess I'm bonking you instead of you because I saved 10 right away. Yeah, the same. Calipers could be good here. Retain 15 block, or re rather retain our block of minus 15. Yoink. Yoink also. Bonus money. Once again, turn one bludgeon against the knob. Rexer. This time I'm not going to need a potion to kill you. We have a guaranteed kill next turn, I believe. We'll take eight, heal six, win the fight. Good fight. Get money, we get energy, we get potion, and we get max health. I feel like we could have had three perfected strikes already. My title off? Oh, I bet it is. What? Excellent. What happens if you try to sell or delete your last card, says uh, Lepetid in Twitch chat. It allows you to do that. You can go to zero cards in deck, and you will simply have no cards to draw at the beginning of combats. Usually this will cause you to lose, but it is possible, technically, to win a run of Slay the Spire with a zero card deck. Uh, and there's a, a very good run by Forgotten Arbiter on YouTube of exactly that. There is not an achievement for winning with zero cards. Not in Slay the Spire. There is in Monster Train. Uh, in Slay the Spire, the achievement is minimalist for less than five cards. Quite a KO, huh? Bummer. Boo. And yeah, Forgotten Arbiter's run was uh, seated. Doing that unseated is going to be nigh impossible. Let me tell you. That's five cards total in the deck. So the, the number here 
has to say five. This number never changes during a fight. Saves a full ten. That's pretty good. Blind boss, though. Bonk. Red Skull. We have three strength when below half health. Including right now. Cool. Question is can we split the slime boss in time? Which the answer is maybe. I feel like Pummel Strike is a good upgrade going into slime boss here. We draw one more card. Helps us get the bloodletting. Shockwave and the Bash support each other. I don't feel like either need an upgrade here. How's it going? Hi, Guy Fried. Congrats on your first art run with Clad. Well done. Could have upgraded Brutality, maybe, for the additional card draw, but what if you just draw it turn one anyway? Is usually my question about that. What a stinky upgrade. Hmm, that's a lot of damage. Let me bloodletting. Yeah, you're super toast, my friends. Nice split. <laughs> you're wrecked. Reaper seems real good with Red Skull and Spot Weakness and Shockwave and Self Harm effects. Yep. Exum can get back an exhausted card. We don't have anything other than Shockwave. Juggernaut deals damage when we block. We have four defends. So yeah, these are terrible. And Reaper is really good. Easy Reaper there. And... More healing with Black Blood. More relics with Black Star. Or additional strength for the enemies, but additional energy for us. Interesting. We're doing okay on energy. We have Bloodletting and Happy Flower. More would certainly be good. I don't like making the enemies stronger, though. The Birdstone. Lure them into our Thorns Potion. Although we really can't block much. I actually don't totally dislike Black Blood here. Black Blood paired with Self Harm cards is kind of cool. Consistent healing. Black Star feels a little iffy. Kind of relying on the Red Skull to get us through Act 2 if we go Black Star here. I'm oddly down for Black Blood. We do indeed have a way to heal with Reaper, but it's not going to be full heals, at least not yet. I'm gonna try this. I don't often take Black Blood, but this seems like a reasonable opportunity to give it a test run, so we're gonna see how it does for us. Heal 12 after each fight. I don't know, Black Star would have been kinda of, kind of spicy. Oh, and we get a shop too? Oh, I'm super taking this path anyway. Well, we maybe don't fight this elite. We'll see. Mark this one in red. These two for sure. Kind of an onbo with the Red Skull. True. True-ish. Yeah, like I said, I'm actually quite curious how this is going to perform. I'm, yeah, birds are here, by the way. Oh god, they're all buffing on turn one. The birds are countering my counter to the birds. Help! Why? 
Why? Shockwave, please. Okay, good. All right, I'm gonna drink this, I guess. Terrifying. tonight. Please. Bird nerds. Wait. Oh, that's a lot of skin chicken. We do get a nice generous heal, though. And we get offered a True Grit Plus. When I have no block cards, sounds pretty good. Bonk. Empty, right? No, we don't need to. Oh, this is for the elite. Please and thank you. Oh, actually. Hmm. Now that you mention it. Surely this is fine. No, I'm two damage short? Are you kidding me? Because I didn't draw the pummel strike. Alright, fine. Telemachus with the 15 months of support. Thank you, thank you. Could have just did that turn one, I guess. Oh, more healing! Trade in the bloody, uh, the yeah, the golden idol for the bloody idol, healing us five health whenever we gain gold, or we can gain some more max health and lose current health, which we can always gain back. Actually, either of these two options are very valid here. Do I ever take Clash? Basically, never. Ascender's Bane makes Clash terrible, so you really can't take it usually. Maybe if you. Blue Candle. Yeah, that does go into Red Skull range, right? And it means we continue to gain bonus money for the rest of the run. Let's take the 5 max health here. Wow. Now, that is a sweet shop. There's Pen Nib with Reaper... Gremlin Horn going into Act 2 Elites might even be better. If I want to fight four Act 2 Elites, Gremlin Horn seems almost mandatory. Trip is really good, although I do have Shockwave. Battle Trance is great. Flex is honestly pretty good. Let's go into Galotine, Exclam Mods. The Breakdown. A command that lists a bunch of other commands. I can afford Gremlin Horn Remove and Fire Pot. That's pretty good. Definitely want that Fire Potion back. Has anyone ever, ever beaten the Heart with a Defect deck using both Reprogram and Bias Cog? I think I've done that. I've definitely done hybrid decks that involve both focus up and focus down. Usually you just, you use one of the two options for each fight and don't use both in the same fight, but I think I've done both in the same fight before. Maybe better to go explosive potion over fire potion, especially if I'm buying Gremlin Horn. That seems entirely reasonable. Although fire potion killing the red slaver earlier is pretty important. But yeah, this is 30 damage in the fights that matter. Sure, explosive pot, Gremlin Horn to move. That'd be what I do here. Uh, and I'm not going to take another combat. I want to roll into the elite fight with Red Skull Health. Get to upgrade a card. Sweet. Bloodletting is a good upgrade. Spot Weakness is an okay upgrade. Shockwave is a decent upgrade. Not for the elite fights, though. We also get to upgrade two, two cards here. 
Let's do Bloodletting Pummel Strike as my two upgrades. That sounds really good. Card draw. Shockwave Reaper. I like it. This will do 10 to all. And that means the Anger works perfectly, too. I want to play the Anger first, though, because if I play the Reaper, I'm going to lose the strength from the Red Skull, and we no longer have lethal on the Mad Grublin. Actually, quite important that we do that order. Uh oh um, Bonk, I suppose. That's a badass turn one. Very smooth Gremlin Leader fight. Um, hold on. Let's do this now. That heal 12 is mattering too. Dream Catcher's not going to do much for us. Do we take a Shrug Plus or a Disarm? Ooh, that's a tough choice. I think it's going to be the Shrug. It's a tough choice, though. Now I can upgrade Spot Weakness. This will be how we beat Champ. So we should get it upgraded. I think we're clear to go red path here. With the Gremlin Horn, I'm no longer really that afraid of elites. We should be able to rack up four relics here. Zagasu with the 39 months of support. Thank you, thank you. What's rarer in Act 2, says Cheesy Wiz, an upgraded common or an unupgraded uncommon? Upgraded commons are more rare. Well, actually, that depends on how you measure it. Um, it's 12.5% chance to get a, an upgraded card, and uncommon is something like 25, 30%-ish base. It does change depending on your, your rare card offset, how many common cards you've seen this act, or how many common cards you've seen since the last rare card, more accurately. Dougal37 with the Prime sub in the six months. ARQ555 with seven months. And Zagasu with 39 months. Thank you all. Unai GG? Could be. Health. We're taking 34. 71 minus 34. Let's see, 151, 41, 37? So even if I don't block, we're one over Red Skull range. Boo. I guess I'd block five then. Um, although we could bloodletting to get into Red Skull. Seems kind of unlikely. Cursed, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. So if we draw exactly Bloodletting Reaper, it was a mistake, but we didn't. Explosive Pot can help me kill the front guy here, but then I might not be able to kill this one. We get to draw three, and I have to get Anger or Bloodletting? Hmm, that's tough too. I think I'd better just kill you. Ah! 
in love with this fight so far. Thankfully, I have a ton of health damage now. Good. That wasn't too bad. Health goes down, health goes up. Career, bonus money. That multiplies with the money from the Golden Idol, so we're being rewarded for keeping the Golden Idol so far. And here's Rupture. Whenever you lose health from a card, gain strength to scale our Reaper. That works with Brutality, and that works with Bloodletting. We super duper click on Rupture here. That is the way we can outscale Champ now. Demon form at home. Oh dear. My face, though. Let me draw a Shockwave Reaper next turn, at least. Although I can't play them both, can I? Oh, God. What is this garbage? Help? Get all this health back. Sushi Smoker with a 15 months of support. Son of a gun. Right. Healing. Smoke Bomb's pretty good. That means we can go for two more elites, and at least we have an out if we would be otherwise killed by Book of Stabbing doing the big stab on turn one. Spooky. This draw order sucks. I'm out of here. Screw that. We get a heal 12 at least. Let's fight our third elite, I guess. Word to the wise, 13, thanks to the Prime sub and the 23 months of support. Heck yeah. Give him the Shockwave, give him the Reaper. Healed 39, back to almost full. And then go back to half health again. Also become vulnerable, which is kind of terrible. Only kind of. Or proc kunai by playing bludgeon? Feels good. Pentagraph, back to full health. And a feel no pain, giving us block on exhaust. We do have a true grit, we have a shockwave. I say good enough. All right, champ, you're toast. Got turn one rupture, brutality even. Fast as possible strength scaling. Champ is super toast here. I guess Shockwave is probably fine. Might be a bit early for Shockwave. It's okay.
Call that a whippin? Yeah, I do. Also call you dick. Spunk you. Please tank your nonsense. Give me even more strength, thank you. Even less strength. Fine. GG, nerd. Easy peasy. Okay, that was no problem as far as boss fight goes. I felt pretty good about the Black Blood pick over the uh, Black Star and the other option. With Black Blood, we have no fear of taking an offering here for even more card draw, even more energy, even more self-harm to scale Rupture with. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't feel that much need for Immolate because we bought the Gremlin Horn. Impervious could be good, but I'm going to take an offering here. Sweet, sweet card draw. Yeah, Black Blood did serious work that act, and now we get to have a Runic Pyramid. Like, that's pretty cool, right? Runic Pyramid Spot Weakness, Runic Pyramid Reaper, Runic Pyramid True Grit Plus, all very good things. Could take Double Strength Potions via Sacred Bark, that's okay. Velvet Choker limits our cards per turn, I don't love that. Made some Black Blood Believers there? Good. Glad you recognize the power of just having a crap load of hit points. Yeah, another Bloodletting would be good now. Ron with a Prime Sub in the 15 months. Um, there is a command, Mini Genator, to show the boss relics we didn't take. What was it? Exclamation point skipped. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Black, Black Star Philostone. I don't think that'll update for the Act 2 until I actually click on a floor here. Let's go here. Let's take these two elites. Could also go here if I wanted. Start this way. What can't the bot do? It cannot make me coffee, unfortunately. Let's see if it updates now. Skipped. Oh, and it includes both. That bot is OP. That bot is OP. Oh my god, that a copy command. <laughs> That's a sponsorship from like years ago. Get, get that out of here. <laughs> I guess we hold anger then. Bonk. More healing. Flex Plus. Gain four strength until the end of the turn for zero cost. Exactly the sort of card that's okay normally, but really good with Runic Pyramid. Dual Wield also very strong there to let us make more copies of Rupture or Reaper. Maybe that was actually even better than the Flex. Although I felt like the energy would be tough. Oh. Oh, yes. Excellent. Most excellent. Of course, before we actually draw Rupture, the pain is definitely an inconvenience. But then suddenly... Oh, look, the, best, the new best card in the deck. That's right. Let's 
We get two strength per card we play, but we also lose one health per card we play. But that's good. It's a good thing. So now the Black Blood's kind of useless. But... One, we're getting awesome cards here. Two, I don't think it matters anymore. That we don't have the, the first boss relic. The other boss relic is Pyramid. Hello? That took a long time. Hello. Tropic Brew seems good. Max health is definitely good. You exhaust the Necronomicurse with Blue Flame and Rupture and gain nearly infinite strength? Yes, it comes back into your hand each time you play it. So yes, you can. Next upgrade, Warp Tongues. Don't forget, we're also getting one random upgrade per turn. That was the actual upside of what we did. The pain is supposed to be a downside. But it's not. It's awesome. That's what it is. Limit Break good now? Limit Break is nuts. With this many options for strength gain. Break is very strong here. We would love a Limit Break. Three. Sometimes we do just have to tank damage, which is pretty acceptable most of the time. Need two sixty-nine. That should be enough, yeah. What do you mean it's got one hit point? Frozen egg will upgrade any powers we find. Cut is not a power. Another rupture would be welcome. Blood for Blood's kind of good. Blood for Blood is really good, actually. Get in here.
with some hands. Reduces unblocked attack damage. Chuggernaut pluses here. That's cute. We want a uh, self-forming clay. That's what we want. Oof. No toxic egg for us. Get lots of money, though. I skip Tungsten Rod here. Yeah, I think we would. Even with Tori, I think we would. needs a dual wield when you can just have three ruptures. Seems good. Okay. Yeah. Waffle looks pretty good. Master Strat also looks decent. Oftentimes her hand is over full anyway, though. Let's take the uh, Waffle. Flash of Steel is okay. I'm going to save money for the funnel shop. Fight. Yeah, we have so much card draw anyway. when you need it, though, eh? No. So I don't need it. 300 bucks. Excellent. We can spend all that money at the final shop. Feel No Pain Plus or Burning Pack Plus? I think I want the Burning Packs. stuff in my hand, like wound, I can't otherwise remove. Always buy four more ruptures, that's right. Where's Repto at? This Gremlin Horn for Reptomancer, she doesn't even bother to show up.
Six strength per card we play. Six. Bonk. One more strength for us. The last key we need. And there it is. Limit break. Double your strength. Don't mind if I do. If only we had this card that actually scaled with strength half decently. Hilariously, we don't. Is that our upgrade? Uh, could be. We don't really have a way to recur it, though. I don't think we actually need this upgraded. There's a card. Heavy Blade Plus. Welcome. That's our finisher. That can kill stuff in one hit. That's the big bonk. No, I don't think we upgrade the Limit Break. I think we want to upgrade Brutality now. Give me that on turn one. Now that we have a lot more cards, it's a lot less likely to get drawn early. Oh, my face. You're not supposed to do that to my face. Don't you know? I play three ruptures. Your turn. <laughs> Hundred strength. Deal one hundred and forty two damage to all enemies. Okay. How about seven hundred and seventy nine? This deck is awesome. All right, who's next? <laughs> hurts a little bit. Taking damage is part of the creative process, though. Flex now, I guess. Okay, okay. Hit better, hit better. There we go. face, though. Oh, well. I guess I'll just kill Donu immediately with a two, 474 damage heavy blade. Alright, goodbye. Goodbye. That's 
lose the pain. Red Skull totally making a difference here. Yep. Totally. I mean you're not dead. Ridiculous. Hey, we're on to Act 4 with full HP. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this hemorrhaging? You ready your blade? Squirting blood all over the part for 2250 damage. Have I been here before? What a run. So we've got... We, we've got skipping Bloody Idol was correct. We've got... Triple Rupture with Pain is our scaling mechanism. What an insane run. We got Black Blood as a boss relic. This is certainly a unique ironclad run in an obscene way, really. I like it. I like it a lot. Let me card draw. Pain Curse was from the Warped Tongs event, which gives you a pain and a relic that upgrades a random card every turn. Mega Prep, excellent. Barricade? Kind of stinky, actually. Rare to see a Barricade Plus on sale, and I'm like, nah, I don't need that. Orrery is really good. This is at minimum 10 max health, right? Let's buy Bag of Prep Orrery. Barrier's okay. Junk. Battle Trance Plus is very good. Oh my god, another limit break. Okay. <laughs> Good talk. I'll just take two max health. All right, we have double limit break. Let's take more card draw then. Card draw and remove the last strike. Surely this is the way to go. Surely. Surely. Glorious. Or whatever. See if I care. I care, I care. Literally just kill them with Reaper. Amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Deck is too strong. Oh, and the God tier turn one draw. We got Rupture Brutality Pain on turn one here for maximum strength scaling. And heck yeah, this run's gonna go on YouTube, you better believe it. Even if I lose here, which I don't expect to. We got Lock Pot, Fear Pot, seems okay. We are gonna take a bunch of damage on turn one here. That is a little concerning, actually. It's fine. I'm too angry to die.
right, this turn's a bit spooky. I think we have just enough block to stay in here, though. But the pain is going to make this a bit of an issue. We actually need that true grit pretty soon here. Let's see. Currently, we're looking at 51? 60... something. Hmm, that is not enough. Two more. And brutality is chipping away. So what if I just do defend, defend, slimes? Would that get me killed? Let's see. Block. Three, six, three. Twelve. Take six damage back. And lose three health from pain. So that's only net three. Currently at 57 plus 6, 63, 66. So plus 3 does keep me alive, just barely. It's really close. I don't like that. And I still have the pain and the brutality in play. That's a very bad. I think we might actually just die here. Let me double check that. So we have 25 plus 18 is 67. Plus three. Plus three, so I should have six left. Six is fine. I pull with the 17 months of support. Thank you, thank you doing what you do. Actually, this is exactly net zero, right? Hmm. Although, I guess that's true of any card. So, I might as well play Limit Break over Defend. Oh, I did the math wrong. I'm dead. <laughs> no! <laughs> GG. GG, Twitch chat. GG. So it goes. So it goes. Without getting the Reaper early enough in the draw order, um, without getting either of the exhaust cards to get rid of that pain, we got trapped there. And we were KO'd even with 98 health. GG. GG. That was so close. Still a YouTube vid? Definitely. I think so. E even though it's scuffed in a number of ways. I'm sick. We I restarted Spire and I lost the run, so... It's pretty, pretty scuffed, but it's still a unique enough run. I think it's worth it. Alas. Well, I have rarely seen such an effective strength engine on a run. Triple rupture plus pain was a great time. But is it enough to win? This run will show you. And that's right, the losing run on YouTube every now and then ain't a bad thing either, I think. Ain't a bad thing. Wow, that was a delightful run, Twitch chat. Yeah, just the killing shield and spear with Reaper outright was great. If only we had taken Impervious I, I, over the second limit break, that would have been a win, for sure. Second limit break was actually just straight up the wrong pick, for the record. So it goes. Pretty happy with our Spire for today. We are next up going to play some Wild Frost. Checking out the updates to that game. Zani with the 10 generous gifted subs. Thank you so much for the support. Hopefully that run was entertaining as heck, even in loss. I had a good time with it. I had a good time with it. So I'm going to take a quick quick break here, Twitch chat, refill the legs, stretch the water. Back in a few minutes for Wild Frost.
Be right back, everybody. Please don't go nowhere. Whoops, that's not right. There we go.
right, Twitch chat, thank you for hanging out. I had a burrito. And now, we're going to play some Wild Frost. Let's see. Same or lock in. Uh, no snow where I am yet. Lots of rain, but no snow. But it's going to feel snowy in uh, Wild Frost here. Definitely. practice with uh, swapping games in this OBS yet. Welcome back, one and all, to Wild Frost. I'll tune that down a little bit. This is a delightful deck-building roguelite um, that also has sort of a, a positioning aspect to it. This came out maybe about a year ago now? Hard to remember, actually. And made a delightful splash when it did land. Uh, since then, it's gotten a bit of post-release love from the devs. There have been several patches adding new cards, tweaking the balance of the game, um, and just now, with a recent patch as of a couple of days ago, adding a revised difficulty system that we are absolutely going to explore. I really liked Wild Frost when we played it first, but didn't find it challenging enough to stick with consistently. So I'm really intrigued to see how it feels now with some quality of life improvements and some added difficulty modifiers. Okay, so that was April this year, about eight months ago. I think Wild Frost is PC only, but others would know better than I. Usually ignorant of such matters. So, new to this version of Wild Frost are the Storm Bells. Kind of similar to Heat from Hades here. They've added a whole bunch of modifiers, all, all, all different penalties that add to an overall count called the Storm Strength. So the Bling Snail Bell increases the prices of, at the shop as well as the price of crowns. The Bell of Death causes companions to become injured. That got removed as a base feature, by the way. If your companions die during a battle, there's no longer a penalty for it normally. Bosses and mini-bosses get charm upgrades. Bosses summon reinforcements faster. Gain a junk card after each boss battle. Some enemies in the ice caves have battle charms. All enemies arrive faster. Some card rewards will have cursed charms. Sun charms on certain enemies in the Frostlands. Bosses all have an extra minion. 
crowns will be cursed. Chance for any enemy to have charms. And your leader loses half of their health before entering the Frostlands. That's pretty spooky overall. And perhaps best of all, they added a button that gives you a random allotment of difficulty bells, which is what we're going to be playing with, because that sounds like the most challenging and therefore the most fun. So, for this run, we will have gunk fruit after boss battles, injuries for companion deaths, cursed charms, and faster enemy reinforcements overall. Whoops, that's not what that was supposed to do. No, this. This. Yeah, these. And then here. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So we can also check select a tribe. Previously, you just got to pick from three leaders. Now you pick a tribe and then you choose one of three leaders. Let's do the snow clan to start here. That essentially means you get more options for starting bonuses. So cards in Wild Frost. At the top, you've got health and the damage value. The damage value activates whenever the countdown of the card triggers. Every card has a countdown value on the bottom, telling you how frequently that unit will do their action. Each time you play a card, the number decreases on all cards by one. Yeah, there's a little bit of a little bit of a left-right camera shift. You're right. I wonder if that's an option. So Ash Wolf, three damage, restore two health to all allies. The the effect on the card also activates when the counter goes off. Restore health is kind of interesting. Gain one blice ice block, basically one buffer stack, whenever they kill. Or apply three snow, slowing down the enemy. Pet moon is pretty cool. Pet Moon. Let's go. And we choose an ally. Spike has spikes. Sneasel draws when struck. Loki makes enemies take double damage. Bushu heals everyone. Has a slow countdown, though. Or Snoof also applies snow. Let's stack the snow. Let's do it. On to the Snowbo Squad. We've already got some new enemies. Go Gong. We've got Smackback. So there are two combat rows in Wild Frost, the top and bottom, and there are um, enemies as well. Let's see, they added some preview stuff, right? Yes. So we can now actually get a preview of how much damage everyone's going to take on their turn. Or no, the order of operations? What is this? One. One. Hmm. Not sure how to read that yet. Can I pause and check the settings, please? Let's do that. Visual effects. So we can alter screen flash effects, alter blood amount, rainbow blood. <laughs> we can change, oh, I want snow. Camera target pull. Okay, let's let's see if that uh, that's the one. There's also a camera shake. Let's turn that off too. But yeah, ha happy to adjust these. Uh, this is something I haven't op haven't often mentioned. Uh, I totally totally can relate to being unable to watch or interact with a game because of a visual effect going on. Um, the no moving background option in Monster Train, as I understand it, was added specifically because of my feedback. Although maybe I wasn't the only person to give this feedback um, about the because uh, I didn't want to play it with the moving background. It gave me motion sickness. 
And very few games do that. I don't know why Monster Train did it for me specifically. Okay, and you can master records to show who they're going to target, too. That's cool. By default, you target the front enemy in the row that you're in. But if there's no enemy in the row, you target the front enemy in the other row. You have to get really wonked out before you realize what was happening. It's a tough life sometimes. All right, let's get Snoof in here. Go. I like that the music waits for, for combat to actually occur before it really kicks in. Can't smack back if you're frozen, I believe. Enemies come in. A winter worm. Winter worm has a slow counter. And a goblin. Which drops money every time it gets hit and will escape from the battle after some time. If we're playing a certain number of cards, we could hit the redraw bell, which you actually cannot see here. Mm. I'm happy with where I am. Maybe tweak the audio down a little bit more. Good music though, so I don't really want to turn it down too much. Hmm. I really want to hit with snow sticks, so I'm actually just gonna redraw. Lost the turn. I want the extra money from hitting the gobbling snow sticks here. So we can use a scrappy sword now. Or I can have Snoop hit the Winter Worm. Even better, right? Yeah, we can rearrange our units at any time. Snow Knight. Whenever any enemy is snowballed, gains one attack power. Hmm. You can strike me directly. Attack for four. Four is fine. So we should just scrappy sword this fool. And then for extra money, we want to kill both of these enemies on the same turn. So we'll use the Sun Rod here. Wait, what? Ah, scammed. Thought they would attack there. It's not. Oh well, we got plenty of money from that first encounter. 
So now we have some path options here. Frozen Travelers, add a card reward to the deck. Bling Snail Cave gives us money. Treasure is a card reward, but a different kind than Frozen Travelers. It's about the same thing, right? We get to go to the cave either way, surely. Treasure. We got here. Snow cake applies 10 snow to one target. The frost bell temporarily reduces attack power. So all enemies in a row. That's the barrage keyword. This does one damage to a random enemy four times. Love the name and the animation on this. I want a snow cake here. We got good frost build going. Maybe we can find some way to exploit that. Bunny. Cleanse all allies, removing all negative status effects. Little Berry. When healed, gain two attack power. Or Yuki. Whenever anything is snowballed, Gain an equal amount of attack power. This enemy, this unit only has one health, but uh, this is absolutely the synergy we were looking for. So, Yuki it is. Let's go. Woodhead that can absorb a hit too. So they've got a mimic. Hit him with one hit point. Orky Pine hits all enemies in the row, so we want to prevent that. And Frost Stinger adds frost, as you'd expect. Let's add frost to Frost Stinger. Makes Yuki strong. need to have Pet Moon take this hit. Then they're acting in the wrong order. Hmm. Maybe we just play Woodhead. Have Woodhead absorb the Porcupine's Barrage. That sounds good. Attack power is real. So we want to ice the gobbling a bunch. We have to slow down Frostinger here. Porcupine is too dangerous to allow to live either. Let's start by Snowstick Frostinger. I have Snoop too. And then maybe we snow cake the gobbling and we can count down on Pet Moon here. That sounds good. I want to keep the gobbling around the long for gaining money off of them. Kill more than one enemy in the same turn, that's a combo, and you get money for it. Oh my, you're strong. This enemy has snow resistance, so you cannot stack snow. Probably we just want to have Yuki donk the boss then. Spooky. Need more ways to actually hit stuff.
What is a turn in this game? Turn is playing a card that will cause every number to decrease, every countdown timer. Um, drawing a new hand of cards also takes a turn, unless the redraw bell has hit zero. You can't actually see the number on the redraw bell because of my webcam here, but it uh, starts at base four. Every time you play a card, it goes down by one. When it reaches zero, you can redraw without spending a turn. Snow the Spire, that's right. Snow the Spire. I'm gonna stop this guy from murdering me, though. Real talk. I think we start by destroying the Ice Lantern, looks like. Seems wise. Reposition our units at any time, by the way. So you want to ice you. So Yuki will kill the porcupine. The boss is going to do big damage. do this. We want to hit the goblin some more. For cash money. I want to use Snoof as a distraction here. idea. Because this guy does too much damage. Five? I don't want my champ to take five. Not if I'm trying to milk the goblin here. I am. Actually, hold on. Combo here, I guess. Strike, strike, strike. So you don't actually die unless you do this, which is probably better, but that's the wrong order, right? Correct. Okay, that's fine. Much, I tell you. Can't kill you in time, correct? Correct. This dog it. It bops. So Snoop is injured, that means they have reduced attack and health for the next battle. No biggie though. Charm Merchant and a Shade Sculptor. I think Shade Sculptor duplicates something. I see we're also indicating which boss we fight now. That's kind of cool. The Woolly Snail is a shop, though. A lot of money. Feels like we really ought to go get our first crown. As tempting as the Charm Merchant might be here. Oh, there's treasure first. So it used to be that you would always get injured if your units perish during combat, but uh, now that's, as of the latest update, that's now a 
um, Storm Bell. So you have to have the Bell of Death active for injuries to occur. Companions temporarily become injured when they die in battles, says the Bell of Death. Let's read attack power to items in your hand. So the snow stick and the scrappy swords and the snow cake all get bonus damage from that. This does poison. It seems bad. Oh, this has a cursed charm on it. I see. That's probably why. An ally is healed. Apply double spice. Now we'll take the spice. Spice Sparklers. I believe you also are able to skip these now. Used to be that you couldn't. I like the spice. And we're going bottom route, because I want to go to the shop here. You mean other characters. If your champion perishes in combat, then you lose the run. There's no others. When consumed, add plus two health to all allies. Let's leave that for later. See if we find a good card for it. I don't think I did. Let me check your chat here, Death Draw. Have you ever come across a mechanic in another deck builder that I think would think would fit well in Slay the Spire? I think it'd be cool if uh, you got something when you skipped a card in Slay the Spire by default. Other games give you a small amount of money is pretty common. So if you got, for example, five gold for skipping a card, I think that'd be cool. Helps. Helps to assist the player in recognizing that... Um, what am I trying to say? In recognizing that skip has value. Wow, both Wallop and Snobble seem awesome here. I think it'd also be cool if there was more ways to take curses. Sort of, uh, like, after a boss, if you could gain curses to get additional bonuses. What's this charm here? can't see what the charm is, it seems like. If I examine here. No, it does not tell me what this charm is. But I believe that's another cursed charm. Both of these are pretty good. Snubble's better if you can scale Snubble's damage. I'm going to take a uh, wall up here. Yeah, second damage dealer. One with a lot of health, too. Plus wallop OP, as they say. Welcome. Hongo's hammer. The mushroom hammer. Double the target's spice. Curious. The nutshell cake is very good with uh, Chom Palm. Add nine shell, reduce the target's health by two. The most important thing you can find at a shop, looks like they start at 75 gold here, is the crown. Cards with a crown are always played at the start of battle. So we can start with Yuki in play, essentially. Can only apply to Snow Cake for now. Uh, we can also buy charms here. I'll buy charm from the charm machine. Charms being effectively card upgrades. Purple charm. Apply three shroom. Minus two health. What can that go on? Our champion? Or wallop? Interesting. Curious. Very Curious. I have exactly enough money for one more charm, or I can save money, which I think is what I'm going to do. Hey there, Poke Niner. Uh, I think the best place would be our Discord. If you're looking to share mods for Wild Frost, 
I'm guessing I don't have a, a specific channel for our uh, for Wild Frost, but general games would probably be one of the best places to to, to talk about mods for Wild Frost. I don't think I'm gonna buy anything else here. We should probably equip a one of these charms. Only the I guess the snow cake charm is fine. Let's have that also add 10 health to all allies. I don't really like lowering the health on our champions, so let's lower the health on Wallop here. Seven health, deals four damage, and applies three poison and does additional damage to snowballed targets. Now for our first boss, Bamboozle. So Yuki starts in play, that's the power of the crown. As a boss, Bamboozle is too wide. By default, bosses attack both rows. This particular boss attacks everyone on the field. They are a jerk. And yeah, the music is just too good. Way too good. Bamboozle's gonna get bamboozled by Yuki here. Uh, but I think I will play Snoop first. So the boss has split in twain here. We got Bam and Boozle now. Uh, and when both of them perish, then the fight will be over. And that's quite a stat line. You see we got quite a few enemies to deal with here. Let's see. Boozle does two attack power, applies a snow, and is wild, meaning they hit... No, it means they attack more times after the other one dies. That's right. I'm about to get iced, so it doesn't matter. So let's get the sparklers in play. These two are going to attack with their random damage. Kill you. Yuki can survive a hit. You do 12. Poison kick in immediately? I'm not sure. Let's see want to distract Boozle here. Oh, we can use the Spice Sparklers for that, right? No, I don't want to. Okay, so all of our units are going to attack. The goal here is to get a big combo. To that end, I think we want to do the following. Like this. Bonk. That's a times three combo. That's a pretty good amount of money. Blessing from the sun, given for our first major boss. Used to be a pick. One of three, now it's take two out of six. I'm not sure if these are all the same each time either. Let's see. Sun charm. It's a charm that reduces the counter by one. Sun bell of the bell. Decrease the redraw bell counter. Sun bell of hands, increase our card draw by one. Pinch charm, gain draw two on kill. Crown, or the Sun Bell of Recalling. Recalling a companion will count down the redraw bell by two. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. I'll take the crown. 
Oh, you can't unpick. That's good to know, actually. And the um, Sun Bell of Hands. Thank you very much. And we get a Gunk Fruit. One damage consume junk card added to the deck because of our difficulty bell. All paths lead to the Wooly Snail. The Muncher can get rid of our junk card. Muncher is a card remove. I believe two cards get removed. We should have enough for another crown. Crowns are powerful. Yeah, I'm going to skip the muncher here. I want a charm in the cave. Gain hog headed. Cannot be recalled, but gain seven health. Oh, you can't put that on the champ. Well, that makes sense. Wallop with 14 health seems pretty good. Or actually Yuki. Yuki going from 1 health to 8 health is kind of a huge deal. Who cares about recall? Hello? Thornbear Spirit. Deal 8 damage to a snowballed target. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. Add one scrap health to an item in a row. Interesting. Oh yeah, I guess I could move the camera up a little bit. That's not a bad spot for it. We go here-ish. You can see the redraw bell. Sure. It's valid. Noomlin basically adds cantrip property to a card in your hands. Good for decks that are trying to play the same card repeatedly as Noomlin Biscuit. Kind of weird overall. Hmm. Fly one frost. Kind of mediocre. Add it on the snow stick. Might be really good. Man, we should equip the third crown. I believe you're allowed to move crowns. Is that true? Yeah. You can reassign crowns at any time. So I guess let's put one on the spice sparklers, too. For now. Till we get something better, anyway. Rumps and Grog. Cool. So the more crowns you have, basically you get one free turn per crown at the start of each fight. And that's why having lots of crowns is basically obscenely good. A little bit too good. Far too good. Cocos. Attack every turn, although they have an initial attack power of zero. Draw bell is charged. I'll use it. This does 11. Seems good. Even this does 4. Doesn't do any damage until the second time they swing. No biggie.
but then they get pretty dangerous pretty quickly. Bopped here? Hmm. Snoop, no. Really, yeah, this is four, not five, so yeah. Bing Moko is here. Bing Moko's kind of spooky. Does the big damage. The idea is that you kill Moko before he attacks, because if he attacks, you're all going to die. Makes him pretty spooky. you to start. Turning. Oh, that's right. Everybody gets bonus damage. I forgot about that. Every time you hit him, everyone gets super powered, including your own units. They're nice. Currently, he would attack for 16 times 5 and kill everyone. We gotta make sure that doesn't happen. Snowball's so huge. I like that the art grows for Yuki. That was actually a little bit sketchy. A toothy Shades. We get a Muncher either way. I don't need more units, so Muncher Charm. Sounds good. A Bonker. Trigger against anything that is hit with a Snowball. Excellent. Got a, it looks like it has a damage penalty or something. You can see there's a cursed charm on it. I'm going to take it anyway. It's great. Bonker is kabonker. I guess Kung Fruit's actually not that bad compared to Scrappy Swords, so I think I should lose Scrappy Swords. Because the Scrappy Swords get redrawn. If I play the Gunk Fruit, it doesn't. Restore three health on a kill. Interesting. 
okay on Wallop or on Yuki here. I like it on Yuki especially. By default, I believe there is a limit of three charms per card. I feel like that's going to matter a lot, so I'm not going to use it yet. Spikes. Oh, this is a nasty configuration. Oh boy. So, while Smog is active, all of our units target random enemies. While this guy is active, all of the enemies have spikes. You have to, do, you have to get rid of them in a certain order, but you can't because your units are aimless. Fortunately, we have super-powered attack cards, so I can just Storm Mirror Spirit to kill one of them. Uh, let's get rid of Aimless. Let's get rid of Aimless. Actually, I don't even need Storm Mirror Spirit, because Snow Stick Scrappy Sword gets a kill. Seems fine. Wait, no, it doesn't. That's not how math works. It's fine. Hmm. This is fine, then. So it's plus ten, right? Enemies go first. Here, just hit Snoof. Just take Snoof out of the deck, right? I can try that. So these enemies gain spikes as they take damage. Makes them a bit annoying. Uh, fortunately, Stormbear Spirit can at least deal with one of them. Is gonna run away. I think that's fine though. Oh yeah, he does that before stuff happens too, huh? Let's strike him with Gunk Root. when you hit it. Although if you ice it, it's completely useless. So no biggie here. We just ice it. Easy game. Although our ice doesn't last long enough here. Still, this should work, right? Oh, crap. Actually, that worked out. Yeah, that worked out. <laughs> that was uh, spooky, though. It's definitely not what I wanted that to do. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, 
Can I just remove Snoot from the deck? Yeah. Bye. Oh, these paths are weird. The charm is on the upper path. They cross over each other. Bizarre. I want to go to the muncher. Red wins. Thanks for the prime sub in the four months. We're going to give the prime as the thanks for the tips on advice on Slay the Spire, Against the Storm, and Cobalt Core. Heck yeah. Happy holidays to you too. Ooh, ice dice? Maybe not. Restore health to the front ally equal to damage dealt, and we have a bonus on it. Elbow's bad. I think Berry Blade. Seems very good. Shelbo rules if you're not adding damage to your items. If you're adding damage to Shelbo, it's very bad. So it's, it's deal five damage, gain five block to, to a row. Seems pretty useless to me. Pepper Reaper. Four Frost and four Spice. Now that's funny. <laughs> that's not how that works. That's stupid. You're stupid. It's a stupid card. Walton Dip's pretty good. Increase the attack power by two to everything in the row. Anything that adds a lot of attack power to one unit is going to be good to get this Kabonker online. So I do like Molten Dip with Kabonker here. So it's either Charm or Molten Dip. I'm not sure which. Actually, Pinkberry Juice is pretty strong for tanking. This card, you can reuse this card. And it's actually very strong. Very strong. I don't think we need Molten Dip, no. Let's get a Charm. Ooh, that's pretty good, actually. Put that on the Kabonker. Give it some durability. I like that. We would like a way to buff damage of Kabonker. But I didn't feel like Molten Dip was good enough. Krunker! boss who is an item. The boss who is literally artillery. A seven. A spuncher. I love the name of that thing. Spuncher. Bunched. one time. Seems fine. Oh, Crunker's not able to do anything here. Poor guy.
think I did that quite right. Plus two to all allies, minus two to all enemies. Ooh. Do I say? Kabonks. Usually I transform Crunker by now. This is kind of funny. Nine here. Keep them on ice. So this boss has a different kind of health, it is actually literally what it says. Scrap health, same as our Kabonker has. That's the number of hits it has to take to die, no matter how much damage they deal. Well, it has to deal at least one to count. So it's two hits, no matter what. But that means we can transform them by playing Snowstick here. Although I'd rather wipe out the front minions here first. That's a ton, actually. Whoops. Actually, no, we can survive this, right? That's fine. Can you charm Kabonker to inflict snow? I wonder how that works. Woodhead, um... I don't want this to go. Yuki, you go here. Woodhead, you go here. Yeah, sack all the items. Phase 2, he actually bombards his own side of the battlefields. Kinda nuts. Changed how applying snow to snow resistant enemies works too. It's good. 41 attack power. Heck yeah. in the box. So again, pick two. This time only five options. Leader gains six health. Moose Charm. Increase the countdown by one. Add three attack power. I'm not sure you're allowed to use that on Kabonker. Maybe you are. Shield Charm. Gain three shield on kill. Oh my. Or battle with a redraw bell charged or plus two to companion limits. Either the Moose Charm or the Shield Charm, I think. Yeah, my bet is that we cannot use it. Let's science, though. Let's find out. Oh, I can take two. That's right. Maybe I take both, then. Sure.
And Travis, with 29 months, I've ruined your life. You saw me play Backpack Hero, so you leached it from a friend's Steam library, which caused you to heavily consider a Steam Deck and buying your own copy. Uh-oh. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent news overall. So, Moose Charm. Yeah, cannot go on Kabunker. I didn't think so. What about the Shield Charm? Shield Charm can go on Kabunker. Wait, how does Acorn work on an item? Does anyone know how this works? Probably better on Yuki anyway. Actually sure I want the Moose Charm. Here, you can have this. You take less damage than the shield, we'll save the scrap. That's what I was hoping you would tell me. But without a way to make the Kabonker actually do real damage, I'm still not convinced. A random ally. Crab has block, negating instances of damage. Good for you, Mr. Krabs. Doubling escape this time. Although this just instantly kills it, I guess. That's fine. You get him, Kabonker. None of our units can recall now. Doesn't matter too much. And this enemy has 12 buffer, which is a ton. Really is a ton. Lots of setup time here, though. Take out these crabs. Just a bonk dump skull here. The poison should take blocks off every turn. These are nasty effects, though. Apply it to the front most enemy. Let's have Kabonker take these two hits and die. That's fine. Um, we definitely want Pet Moon to get hit, not Yuki. Yuki would be very bad. Actually, let's see if we can prevent this entirely. 
Or at least delay it. This thing also attacks for eight in a second here. It's a bit spooky. But you don't do that. Continuing to apply poison to Numbskull here seems like a good idea. Uh, now we can get both bursters before anything more untowards happens, I assume. And this is going to apply to a random ally, right? Not sure if it's in the row or not. Let's hope that it is. Or shield. Acceptable. Bah. Alright, just kill you then. Cool. You can take this hit, Yuki. can get confused again. That's fine. Mr. Krabs is not allowed to do that. Alright, you have to slow down, sir. Okay, Petman's gonna strike someone. What if it's the Whiphead? You! Okay, we want to break the block so that Yuki can finish Numbskull here. Bonk. Look at that giant snowball. Not bad. Not bad. Charm merchant and a muncher, or a charm and a treasure? Give me the muncher, yes? Wouldn't mind losing flame water. Get rid of the other gunk fruit? Sure. What does the charm merchant have? Rare charms for sale. There's also a Noomlin Bite Box, which is a nuts card. As a cantrip, play down an item that retaliates with equal damage if struck. So basically the old reversey card. Uno reverse. Activate twice and gain consume. Double effects if this is the rightmost card in your hand. Or apply poison. Oh my, apply poison. That's good on uh, Kabunker. Pretty much all of these are good. Most card. Seems really good on Snowcake. Or yeah, double stack flame water. And we could do that on turn one, right? That seems very good. Thanks for literally everything. So these are the items that can have crits, just for the record. Yeah, and I think we double stack the flame water here. Room charm goes here.
Why is that times three? That would be times two. Seems good. Oh, it's add times two. Additive. Okay, cool. All right, who wants to lose their crown? Spice sparklers. You are uncrowned. Flame water, you are crowned. Good talk. Okay, this is pretty broken. I wouldn't call it, like, the most broken thing I've ever made in this game, but it seems pretty good. Lose the woodhead? Woodhead's okay, though. I don't have to sack another thing, do I? I guess Sunrod's not that good, but it could be good. Eh. Keep it all. So adds to Frenzy. Got it. So is that going to be times five or times six? Excellent question. Let's see what this does. So it's increased attack power by two times three. Oh my. It's kabunking time. So here we are facing the Frost Guardian. When this enemy loses health, add equal damage to the self and all allies. You want to leave the Frost Guardian for last, usually. We're here to bonk, and we're feeling strong. Ooh. It's sponged. It's sponged, friend. You go first doing nothing, then we go. You attack, you kill. Yuki's gonna hit the Frost Guardian. Now, Yuki, hit this thing, please. Let's just use this. Nah, just hit the redraw bell. to all allies. Cute. Use Newland bite box the Frost Guardian. Seems good. You're dead too. Once again, the Guardian goes first, doing nothing, and then we obliterate them. Seems good. Cool. Killed, lose half of this thing's health, and gain two attack power. So it scales up now as allies die. It has so much health that you have to kill the allies, or you'll never do anything to it, really. Okay, we're 
taking seven to pet moon, that's fine. Although we don't want Yuki to strike Bigfoot here, that's kind of a waste. I guess we want... Let's actually use the Woodhead. So we have space here. Let me kill the Winter Worm. We can heal up with the Berry Blade after the fact. Uh, and once again, I don't actually want to play any of this. Uh, no, no, we can Storm Bear Spirit. That's fine. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. That's right. Anything that is hit with snow gets hit by Kabonker, whether it's a friend or foe. Really good to know. Terrifying. Oh god, that's horrible. That's horrible. Uh, we need to heal wall up now. Definitely. Actually, yeah, Kabonker, you can take this hit. I was not expecting that. It's cute. That does heal with overkill damage. That's good to know. Sixty-two health. Attacks for twelve. Let's put the sparklers in front, just in case it does get to attack. But I'm going to intend not to let it attack here. Light box then. Get bit. Now Pet Moon ascends and becomes the new Frost Guardian. BG. <laughs> Some stuff unlocked in town, too. GG. So there is a sort of true final boss you can fight in Frost. Not Fro uh, Wild Frost. I think they changed how you do it. Used to be you had to, like, make an urn during the run. I think it might be related to the bell system now. I'm not actually sure. Chiseled card frames, by the way, mastery is a thing now. So you get new card frames for winning runs with particular cards. Yeah, I have to get Storm Bell Power 10. That's what I thought. It is related to the, the bell system now. Cool. Thank you for clarifying, Twitch chat. And our new Frost Guardian has ascended. One of the coolest things about this game, at least if you're not going for the true final boss is that your team that you made becomes your new final boss. So now we have to fight uh, Pet Moon, Wallop, and Yuki with the charms they had for real uh, during the next run. That's pretty cool. Evil Yuki. 20 health. Pretty spooky, man. That, that's going to be a nasty combo. Five snowball on the boss with snow resist. Spooky. That's spooky. Here. Gnome Traveler. Sneaky Gnome. No strings attached, they say. Yeah. 
Is it possible to make a team that's so strong that you cannot beat them when they become the bosses? I mean, everything can be beaten, but you can definitely create a team that is very hard to beat. Definitely. Definitely. Didn't make a new save file here. We're just continuing to unlock stuff on uh, the one that we had. Let's try the other clan now. We have a new Max Bell, right? Storm Limit 6. Give me a random set of 6, please. We've got higher prices, including more expensive crowns, faster reinforcements during boss battles, add a gobbler, and we lose half health before entering the Frostlands, which I'm not sure what it, that even is. Summon a minion, Fallow. Shader and Fallow. Two damage barrage is kind of cool. High health. Oh, the, five base health on the leader, though. That's really bad. No smack back? That's kind of badass. Our kid. Although we know we're facing Yuki, so I don't think I want to apply Snow Smack back. So it's either Anburn or we try the, the minion. I mean, 5 health isn't that low when you consider that we get a 6 health summon, so it's actually 11. Let's take Fellow and Shader here. And I like Spike, I think, for this. 8 health, 2 spikes. True Ending's kind of like the, the Spire's Heart Fight, basically a much harder version of the final boss that you must meet specific conditions during the run to unlock. Ushu is interesting, too. Let's fight the Snowbo Squad. That's cool. Tar blade. Does additional damage equal to the number of tar blades in hand? We have a summon too. The summons have different art shape now. I don't think they had that before. Summoned creatures lose one health after triggering. Fun fact. Oh, even if there's no target to attack. Oh, that's right, we can hit the bell early. Sweet. You could do that. Actually, and 
This guy will go too quickly. We've got to ice him or something. Yeah, we'll make Snow Knight do more damage, but it's not enough more damage. Or we can just Tar Blade. That's a lot of Tar Blade damage. Um, is it possible to kill all of these enemies at the same time? That's the better question. Looks like yes. Perfect. Okay, so we should be able to get them all at once here. Frozen Travelers looks good. Let's go with the Charmer out here. Goat Charm. Apply Demon Eyes, doubling, doubling the next instance of damage to the target. That could be very strong if we have an easy way to apply it. Unfortunately, we can't put that on the Barrage Fellow. Is there a summon? We could apply it to a Tar Blade or the Blizzard Bottle. Seems mediocre. We'll look for a better opportunity. Break the ice. Snuffle. Apply one snow to all enemies. This is pretty cool. I like Taiga. Has pretty good health. Cute freckles and gains teeth. Over time. When an ally is sacrificed, gain their attack power, says Devacro. Yeah, does the demonized charm work on Snuffle is the immediate question. Because it's good if so. I'm not sure. Is Snuffle's not actually attacking? I think Snuffle in general is very good. Let's grab Snuffle and find out. Oh, you totally can. Hell yeah. Is it to all enemies? Deeply unclear, actually. We're gonna find out. Yeah, Snuffle only demonizes one thing. Indeed, looks like it. So Snuffle demonizes as an attack and then does snow to everybody. Exfo AJ, thanks for the prime sub and the two months of support. He gained zero attack. Oh yeah, he actually does an attack now. Oh, interesting. Weird. That is weird. Chi-chi. When sacrificed, summon Chikasan. Apply more demonize. No basic attack power. So that would have been good with a sacrifice guy, I guess. Hmm. I think I'm still going to take it. Here's an important question. Do charms... Does, does anybody know if charms on this card apply to the subsequent summons? They do not. Blah. Blah, is my response to that. Wish I had taken Taiga then. We could have done Taiga Bonnie. Bonnie seems so weak. I guess I'll take Demona. Not feeling good about this, but we don't have to keep Demona for the whole run. Ooba bear. Hmm. Seems kind of tough, actually.
Again, allowed to summon more enemies as a free action. That could be good for our barrage unit, actually. We're thinking about. Again, the more enemies you can kill in one turn, the more money you can make. Of course, the greater the threat as well. Bear takes two from hitting Spike. Bala will do two to all of them. That makes me want to hit the Goblin, I think. The Goblin. I guess I'll put down Demona. He's got a snow bazooka. I like it. Snow gobbler plus bumbo. It was pretty cool, actually. Bumbo smash. Hmm, how do I want this to go? Snuffle's going shortly, but the frostinger goes first. Although we can kill it with Demona. I guess we'll do that. Where our companions don't get injured if they perish this time. This thing has seven attack power. We must kill this soon. The legs, chat. What you gotta do? The gnome traveler and the charm merchant or the shade sculptor. I wouldn't mind another frozen travelers. I don't feel like we got good enough units to actually work with, but I really want to try out the gnome traveler. Hmm. Let's just do it. See what the treasure is first, I guess. 
Summon Palm on the enemy side. Give all of our units barrage. It's amazing. Totem of the Goat. Before an enemy attacks, give them Demonize. Or the Bite Box. Bite Box is really good, especially with Demonize. We can cause enemies to hit themselves for double damage. That's ridiculous. Block Space, too. That can be kind of cool. I'm going to the Gnome Trawler. Screw it. Tigris. Gain thorns when any ally or themselves are hit. Magma booster. Increase damage by three, but make them aimless. Interesting. Or bomb barrel. Cause the target to take four additional damage from all sources, but add four junk to our hands. Yeah, it used to be a prime infinite enabler because of that trash ad. I think they patched that. Such that if you get junk during the crown phase, you probably can't play it for free anymore. My guess. Kind of like the Megma Booster. You have Aimless and Barrage. What happens? I don't remember here. If that works or anti-works. Overwrites Barrage. Okay, that's crap. Got it. Boo. So I probably don't want Megma Booster. I guess Bomb Barrel's pretty good. Oh, I see. And we also get junk? Terrifying. So if we take more of them, we get more junk. Got it. Boo. Summon a copy of an enemy on your side with one health. Ooh, critical charm is very good. Yank, pull the target to the front. Balance charm, set health, attack, and countdown all to three. That's an improvement on Snoffle, big time. Loses one health, but gains three attack power, and the counter goes down. And then the critical charm just seems busted, really. So I'm probably just going to buy it. Although we have the Woolly Snail up next, do we not? That's our boss preview. That's right. So I don't want to spend so much money that I can't afford the crown. Which should be 85? Ah, crud. Boo. Hmm. These are too good, though. Screw it. Seventy-five normally. Oh, no, it's eighty, not eighty-five. Okay, I could have got it. Excuse me one second, Twitch chat. I'll be right back.
Okay. I think I can function again. <clears throat> Leave the target charm off for now. We're gonna fight Bamboozle. Why are the food tube, the water tube, and the breathe tube all the same tube? Not fair, man. We need Snoffle. We need Snoffle and we need him now. I'm just gonna hit the redraw bell. Oh god. Well, that's bad. That's very bad. Bamboozle's gonna destroy my champion here. Concerning. Very concerning, especially when we've got aimless, too. Concerning. Right, we have to prevent Bamboozle from attacking again, as they'll kill our champion. I don't know how to do that, though, so... Concerning. Very much concerning. Pretty sure we just lose because our cards are terrible. One health. Okay, Snowbow hits Spike. We want a Berry Bell here, I think. Might need to Bomb Barrel Bamboozle to get the kill in time. Well, Snuffle's gonna deal six. No, 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 we're fine, we're fine. I don't want to trash everything. There we go, that bought me some time. Get you in play. Okay, so Shader will deal with Bamboozle. We have four tar blades in hand. Oh, the Winter Worm's gonna go off. Oh crap. Uh, Bite Box, get in front. Kill that Winter Worm for me. Season, thank you. I can also sunburst 2-2 two, two Snoffle here to refreeze everyone. I don't want to do that yet, actually. Something a Gen Gen to take the hit is also acceptable, although I like that the Bite Box will just KO it, basically. We should deal with this Gobbler gonna have a huge attack power.
Okay. Feels a bit better now. Maybe we don't lose after all. Hit him again, Snobble. Easier to let just Boozle have a hit spike here. Oh, this is Barrage? I did not realize that. Seems badass. That's right, we can recall our companions, although you can't recall your champion. It's just not how it works. Alright, why don't we just kill them all? Sounds good to me. GG nerds. Glad we didn't perish there. Six health on leader seems okay. Seven health. Add frenzy and game aimless is a charm. Does that? Does that work? Let's find out if that works. <laughs> Excellent. Just what I wanted. Snoffle ain't awful. Bomb bomb. Look at those stats. But deals five damage to self and all allies in the row. Kaboom. Apply Overburn. Increase that by one when hit. We added a Ladyberry. When hit, add lost health to a random ally. I like that for durability. Snoffle's going to be putting in some work now. Hmm. Sure. Spike for now. Spark. Trigger immediately when deployed. Interesting. That only works on units. Put on Demona. Snuffle Snow Effect isn't its attack, though. Yeah, I'm actually not 100% sure how this is going to work with Snuffle, so we're partially sciencing it. I don't know if it's going to be too snow to all enemies or not. If it's not, I will be disappointed. So it goes. So it goes.
checks randomly. Nope, that is two snow to all enemies. Awesome. Two snow to all enemies every three turns. Basically, no enemies can do anything. Uh, so we probably want to summon in new enemies before that happens, too. Seems broken. Uh, we get a combo here. So just enough three enemies, not enough space. Can't be called early when there's not enough space. Got it. Seems valid, I guess. want to bomb barrel King Mojo here. Now that's what I'm talking about. Fun. Get him. Wow. <laughs> damage. Snuffle just did 20 plus damage. Ludicrous. That guy seems OP. So wait, is Shade Sculptor the duplicator? We have to find out. This way. Although I'm not sure you can duplicate uh, units. I'm gonna find out. Yeah, I can't dupe heroes. I didn't think so. You can only dupe item cards, right? As well, Battle Axe seems powerful. Apply Overburn equal to damage dealt, and we can multiply the damage. And we can also do it with Bomb Barrel, too, right? Overburn is to all targets in the row. Snow Cake's also pretty strong. Okay, let's go uh, Snow Cake, actually. So yeah, if I can't duplicate the unit, I probably want to go Muncher, huh? Get rid of the junk. Maybe one Tar Blade? Or Berry Bell's not that good. Battle Axe with Critical. Oh, that's true, actually. I haven't thought about what we're going to use Crit on. Thank you. 
peaceful now. Okay, that's enough money to afford another crown. Holy Drek. Eat and absorb a random ally. Bonk. Four enemies, okay. Get froze. Shows glows red when you can do it? No. That's not how it works. Snuffle, you can go first, actually. And then I'll probably sunburst 2-2 two -two and have a double freeze on everybody. So I guess we should kill you. this. Enjoy your ice. slowing you down. Kind of nonsense. Hmm. Reapply that, huh?
guess we just go for the kill. I was hoping we could get more kills, but the pawpaw having too many teeth means I can't have my champion do anything. snail either way. I don't want more frozen travelers. I want more charms. So let's go north. Get rid of these daggers, I guess. Tiger charm. Gain one spikes when hit. Maybe cool on berries this. Think about that. Hello. Now this is the much better health adding thing. Slap crackers one damage four times can also be very strong under the right circumstances. I don't think this is it though. We definitely want a crown. I probably want a charm, too. Didn't remove the junk? Yes, I did. There's no junk here. Game Barrage and reduce attack power by two. Interesting. Curious. Like a buff card. I guess Pinkberry Juice is a buff card. Maybe some good stuff with that. Okay, let's do Pinkberry Juice. Unknown Force, thanks for the Prime sub and the seven months. This isn't Ed Consume, right? Yeah, juice with crit is going to be a lot of health added. And that could do some useful things. So I think that's what I'm going to put the crit on here. Maybe if we went on uh, Spike. Oh well. That's fine. I'm the triple boss here. Did I put the crown on the thing? I don't know if I remember to. Oh, I did. Good. So he splits when it loses a sufficient amount of health. Splitting in two. Definitely questionable utility overall. Tools are miserable. Heck that noise, man. Too. So that overfilled the 
the board and prevented some stuff from coming in here. Exactly as I wished it. Gobblers are kind of terrifying. Although these aren't actually dying, right? Furious. Let's freeze it. Money. I like that. Dead. This is the rightmost card, which it will be if I use this card. Works well enough for me, I suppose. Valorant Sky with the 28 months, card battles, and cozy vibes galore. It's not a counter. Oh, I guess it splits. Splits the statuses amongst them? That's kind of weird. I like it, though. Combo's there. We're rich. The storm takes its toll on Shader. We go down to three health on our champion. That seems terrible. Maybe we can fix that with a, a health bell here. Ooh, Sun Charm. If only I could put that on Snoffle. Place current attack power with apply overburn. Oh my. Yeah, too fast to be two turns to all enemies. Or wave bell counter plus one. So the reinforcements take longer to arrive. Interesting bonus. I like starting with the redraw bell charged. Sun Charm in general is good. We can put that on Demona. Is Ironclad my favorite character, or am I just streaking it with him because he's the first? Uh, 
more the latter than the former. I'd say Defect is probably my favorite character, but I enjoy Ironclad a lot, so that is also partially the motivation. Let's go with these two. All right, show me some shops. There's a sh that's not a shop. Another muncher's great though. Get rid of two more stinky daggers. So I guess I probably want Spark Charm, Sun Charm on Demona. Probably. Also put on the champ. Ooh, mediocre. I feel like defect has been pushed the least in the top, top, top level. Yeah, I I think that's because defect is a skill cap that's about ten times higher than the other characters. No exaggeration. The other characters take thousands of hours to master. I think defect will be tens of thousands. Crazy character. Very crazy character. Okay, Barry's just being confused ain't so bad. Let's use the pink berry juice on our champ if the three health is a problem. Mr. Krabs. Like two ice to a random ally, huh? Call Snuffle, and they go back into the draw pile. I don't usually use that feature much. Okay, that is a truly random target. That's scary. That's really scary. Champ has three health. We should probably buff the champ health-wise in the next fight, just to avoid disaster. We have 11 frost. Good for you, bud. can't be recalled because they're all hog-headed. Uh, and now we're going to put Bomb Barrel down, I think. Although Bomb Barrel up here is better. Okay, don't block on them. It's not by default. Critical. Let's just do this to the champion, yeah? Although I want to boost Snuffle again, so maybe we boost Snuffle here. 
like a tutu snuffle. Tutu! Guess it's better on fallow, huh? These guys are impossible to kill. Great. Yeah, let's crit the champion here. I also have Demona be the one that gets hit by the bursters. That's not so bad. Just attack that burst or two. Although this still kills you, right? Yeah. Zero plus four times two is eight. So it's still eight damage. Seems good to me. to do something. Is it enough damage? pretty useful because it makes our zero attackers actually deal damage, including the junk. That junk did eight damage. So I'm adding four and then multiplying by two with Demon Eyes. GG. Sir Finale with a six months in the Prime sub. Thank you, thank you. Definitely need to go to a shop. We are loaded. Kill an ally, add their attack power to all allies. You what? If only I had an ally with decent attack power. Fly three frost. I'm gonna leech. Take three health from all allies. Curious. These are all weird. This frost bloom could be pretty good. To nerf a particular enemy. Does that work on summons? Yes. Be popper. When destroyed, deal eight damage to all allies. Cool. Is 
Target to front. Hmm. Glorious. So that would have been good with the, the bomb lady, for example, the sacrifice card. Bomb bomb I've had some use for. for. Oh yeah, this is a Numelin attack. You're right, it does one damage. Give me that. Good call. Definitely want at least one charm here, too. Deep Popper seems good as well. Plus two health on all allies is excellent. Start with Demona in play. Although, since she has Spark, it's a bit weird. That seems good, though, yeah? Crown on Palm Bomb can work. When consumed, apply two Overburn to all enemies. Summon unless there's an empty space, right? Bee Popper Pom Bomb seems like a hilarious combo. It's almost worth two crowns. That'd be deal 13 to everybody on turn one. Does that actually help me in the boss fight, though? I'm not sure that it does. If it does. Cute enough. Let's do it. goes. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's fine. Let's try it. Yeah, four enemies to start. That's not too bad. I like that. I do like that as a start, actually. And you know what? I am going to buff your health, because you only have three health, and I don't want to die. Alright, I'm going to take out Yuki first, because Yuki is spooky. Spooky Yuki. about to slow everybody down. Go kill the top two and freeze the bottom two, I guess. Freeze you then. really afraid of the champion here. Numlin is free, so we might as well. Uh, call these early. Cool. Oh, that, that did me a disservice, actually. Oh, jeez. Uh, I have to kill the Ice Forge. Yep. 
Newman is this game's uh, equivalence of like an instant keyword, basically. Starts with Newman, don't take your turn. Some explosion. Enjoy your explosion. Guardian assumes their normal form from phase two. When an ally is killed, they lose half their health and gain two attack power. Get the bite box down. It's fine. Yeah, Trillic, thanks for the tier one sub and for three months of support. Any incentive to not go too far above the damage curve because you end up fighting yourself? I'm not, I'm not sure that enough of your damage is preserved into the enemy for that to actually matter. Kind of a fun thought, though. Are any enemies still undamaged? Technically, this... No, it's not. It's missing one hit point. All right, good talk. Fair enough. Still does damage, right? Just to one guy. Yeah, evil, this Snuffle is going to be a menace, that's true. The Snuffle's evil. Oh, you don't even do any damage. Boo. Here, you come to the front, then. Beautiful nonsense. Love it. You guys are screwed now. It's over. We got nothing. GG. Not going for the true ending yet, as we are no longer eligible to do it. We have to get some higher difficulty unlocked first. Victory! Excellent. So we got a whole bunch of new card frames, including Demona, who I'll probably never take again. Although she's better than I thought, the Demon Eyes. Every three turns is pretty good. And our new guardian. Shader doesn't have much health. Let's see. Snoffle. 14 health. 3 activation. Oh yeah, he's 
he's super spooky. <laughs> That's terrifying. We are going to have to kill this guy very fast. You can just freeze him, though. He's not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah, Shader basically gets no abilities because they can't summon stuff as an enemy. Ethan kill. That's not too bad either. Although the adding lost health to a random ally is going to be annoying with 20 health. And then some generic stuff. GG. Oh, that was a delightful run. Let me get in the adventures huts. Chrono is back. Oh, now it's add frenzy to allies without a crown. Probably a better design for this card. I think it used to be allies with a crown and it was broken. So I'm glad they changed that. Well, we had some delightful runs of Wild Frost. Uh, that, my friends, though, is going to be the end of our stream here today. As I'm going to be saying farewell so long and have a cozy time to one and all. We will be back at it tomorrow with some more Slay the Spire. We're going to be playing a modded Slay the Spire, doing downfall runs with Twitch chat chewing, choosing the character that I play. And then I'm not sure what in the second half. I, I want to play more Against the Storm. I want to play more Wild Frost. There's a lot I want to play. Coming up on Saturday is going to be more Sea of Stars, which is also going to be great. That's the plan for the rest of the week. But for now, Twitch chat, I am out of here. Please stay cozy and have a good one, friends. Let's see, is anybody streaming? Mm, nobody's doing Frostpunk or Wild Frost. I'll just get out of here, Twitch chat. Thank you once again so much for watching. Have a cozy, cozy evening, everybody. Till next time, my friends. Toodaloo. And good night. Bye-bye.